this meeting to order. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I do have a report out of closed session. The board voted unanimously to approve a satisfactory annual performance evaluation of the district manager. More, more to follow later. Um, thank you. Uh, so now we will go to open session. Uh, we're going to do roll call. Holly? Director Pulse? Here. Director Ferris? Here. President Henry? Here. Director Swan? Here. Director Moran? Here. Thank you. Um, before we start, if I could say something, I really want to thank staff for the good job they did when we had the power outage. They worked like 24-7. I'm glad that they, they were pretty worn out. I'm glad that it didn't go five or seven days. It would have been a nightmare. But it made me think about all the times since I've lived in the valley, how many times we've been a disaster area. And SLV used to be a lot smaller when I first moved here. And it's a lot bigger now. And it takes a lot more work when there's a big disaster. So I, I just want to say thank you to staff. Senior staff did a good job of having everything so organized. And the rest of staff just worked their hearts out. So I'm just saying thank you to them. Chair, right. sure. so, just real quick, uh, during uh, reports, we'll give an update on the uh, power outage okay. uh, during our reports. Okay, good. So uh, do you have any additions or deletions to the Staff has agenda? none. Okay. Uh, oral communications, it's your time to talk about anything that is not on the agenda. Uh, looks like we have quite a few people here tonight. One thing, I, I, I mean, you're all invited to speak, uh, but I would appreciate it if you agree with something that was said, you'd say, I agree with so-and-so, instead of repeating it, if, if you could just... Humor me with that. That would make me quite happy. Okay. So any communications out there about something that's not on the agenda? I scared you all. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving right along, I'm going to go to unfinished business, and that's the Lompico tanks. And Roger. That's my room. Get to it. You you have uh, some information in your packet, and I do believe we were unable to put the, the backup on the uh, the initial study and the mitigated negative declaration um, in the packet. But we did give links uh, on on the website. Um, the project is the replacement of three water tanks. It's actually six water tanks, but it's at three uh, the same locations. The Kasky, Madrone, and Lewis tank sites are located in the Lompico community. Uh, the Kasky tank is located approximately 750 feet northwest uh, of uh, Tromba Road. The Madrone tank site is located approximately 650 feet northwest uh, of the intersection of Madrone Avenue. And the Lewis tank is located approximately 1,200 southwest of the intersection of uh, Vera Avenue and West. Uh, the project uh, is part of the Lumpico annexation and is being funded by the Lumpico Assessment District. Uh, the district proposes to replace the aging water storage tanks at uh, the three distinct locations. Um, that would be 260,000 gallons uh, at uh, Kasky, uh, 260,000 gallons at the Madrone, I hope they got these right, but they may not. Um, and at the Lewis tank site, it'll be two 110,000 gallon steel bolted water storage tanks. As part of uh, 
as part of the project, we're required to do an initial uh, study uh, for uh, to be submitted to the county for a mitigated negative declaration. It's been recommended that the board approve the initial study to be submitted uh, to initiate the, the CEQA process. Uh, the comment period will be open uh, with your approval and, and will be closed in 30 days to satisfy CEQA regulations. And we could not get in the packet, I apologize, but I hope you have a chance to take a look at the, the report on the website. And so I'm asking the board to move forward. So we need consensus on this or a vote? Well, I believe we need a vote. vote. Yes. Um, anybody like to make a motion here? Do you want to open up a comment or talk oh. to the board first? That, you're right. It's a good thing you're watching over me tonight. Um, well, I can ask the board if they want to talk about it first. I just had a quick question. What are the size of the tanks that are going to go through the okay. Oh, one's 100,000 gallon of wood. Right. But I think these are the actual sizes that are there now, and they've been changed. Well, that was 60 and 60, and before it was 100 and Right, 100. so that's why I'm that's, thinking that... That's what it was. And we went through this before on, on yeah, the same... Yeah, there were so. two in each location. Right. On the right. east side, it was two 60-gallon tanks and one at Caskey and two 60 at Madrona. Right. So we're, we're gaining... An adi some additional storage, not a lot. We are gaining some additional okay. on storage. On the west side. And they're effectively the same size. So. Effectively, yeah. except we're replacing uh, the Lewis 2 at the Lewis 1 location. But total storage, there is a gain. Um, yeah, there is a gain in storage. Not a lot, but there is a gain. Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, it's a small gain. Okay. Any other board questions? Well, I just have a technical thing. I tried to bring up those uh, links on my little iPad, and I could not. But they're, they're huge. They're, they're big files. They're big yeah. files. We couldn't I even get a transfer. I can do them on my laptop, so okay. you need to replace your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look around. Right okay. <clears throat> so, any comments from the audience? Tony? Well, um, Lompico, uh, Tony Norton from Lompico, and we've been waiting a long time, so we really do appreciate the, the work that's been done and the movement forward that's been made, and we hope that you will approve this, and we really, really would appreciate it if you can correct those numbers. Right, I, I it, think those numbers are wrong. We don't want um, Lompicans to think we're going down, and we right. to know this we're in, improving the amount of um, Storage. Thank you very much. Deborah Lowe and Lumpico also, and I agree with Tony <laughs> <laughs> on all the points. And I think, Rick, at the um, Flat Up Committee, you said there was going to be about a 20,000 gallon Yeah, I increase. think there was. This, you were right, you brought it up, and I researched it, and I sent mm -hmm. you the email, but I didn't get it in the memo in this memo. But in this memo, it says the Lewis are going to be 110,000, so that makes up the 20,000, and I don't know if that's a re-engineering and the other ones are staying the well, same. Well, it may be the nominal size, but I would be willing to say that once with the overflow and the seismic level to keep them a sloshing as you're down around 100,000. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions out there? Oh. Is there going to be one or are there going to be two tanks? Two tanks at each location. At the Lewis? That's correct. Two, two 110,000 gallon tanks at the yeah. Lewis, right. Yeah. And we'll have to remove the building and there's a well there that we'll destroy. And there's a considerable amount of site work to be done yeah. at Lewis to get those both to fit. Okay. Um, but with this uh, process and with the uh, 20 to the 30 day uh, review period, we're still on for a spring uh, construction. Um, I'm pretty sure the district engineer plans to bid all three together um, now that we have uh, approval from Federal Fish and Wildlife to, to move on uh, the Lewis tents. So hopefully we'll get a good price uh, uh, on that. He wants to make sure this bid goes out in the beginning of this construction season so we get <coughs> a considerable amount of contractors to bid on it. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, Ed? Uh, I'm wondering if Rick could, could say how much we spent on the environmental just for <coughs> Lewis Tank's site. There was a cost involved there. Well, there, there was a cost for to, to set up the endowment fund for the Mount Hermon June deal of about $94,000. That would be separate of any of the work that was done. So there was a ninety-four thousand dollars. Ninety-four thousand. Okay, that's correct. So that was environmental cost. I do yes, and that'll probably. I'm not sure. It'll probably be in your next. So you're not ignoring. You're not ignoring environmental costs. You haven't seen any of it. That's a good question. Now. Okay, but that's what the cost is. Ninety-four thousand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so I need a motion here. Every, all board members are shy. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the recommendation that we uh, seek the motion for the May I suggest something? What? A uh, motion to open the public comment period for the mitigated ne negative declaration and initial study for the Lompico Tanks Replacement Project. I'll make that motion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I second it. There you go. Oh, Holly, you want to call the question? <laughs> I apologize, yes. Uh, Director Fultz? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. And Director Moran? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item is the um, Strategic plan update, um, discussion, and possible action by the board of Rick. Um, I, I'll just kind of do a quick introduction, and then I think I'll, I'll ask the, the the chair of the admin committee meeting, Director Fultz, to kind of to weigh in. But we did take the strategic plan process um, back to the administration committee to talk about the process moving forward as directed by the board. On September 5th, uh, as part of the agenda, Director Fultz submitted a draft strategic plan for consideration. The attached plan is intended to provide a draft and only a draft for board discussion and consideration. Also attached to the review is the district's current strategic plan. After discussion, the board requested that the strategic plan be sent back to the administration committee to A, discuss and recommend the process for moving forward, and B, recommend uh, section topics. The administration committee met on October 2nd, 2019 and developed the following. Uh, there is a uh, substantial list of, of discussion items that the committee uh, discussed uh, to bring back to the, to the board. And we are coming back to the board uh, for consideration. Um, also examine topics as requested by the board using the table below as a guide. That was the current 2015 plan, the proposed 12-2016 plan, and then the proposed 2019 plan. So I'm going to turn it back over to the director, Fultz, so he probably would like to add to it. Um, so there was considerable discussion. Sure. Okay. Uh, thanks, Rick. Um, don't have too much to add to it. Uh, it was a very robust conversation um, uh, about this. A variety of viewpoints were uh, considered and, and aired during that conversation. And I think at the end of all that, the committee reached a consensus on what is here in the, in the board packet um, with recommendations for the process. So basically, um, we would, as a board, need to select a base document that we're going to use as a starting point. Um, the committee recommended that we appoint two people uh, to act as um, basically editors to take the input from the process and put it into updated drafts of the strategic plan as we go along. The committee did not have any recommendations for either of those topics, um, leaving that to the board. Uh, the committee recommended that we schedule two meetings for community input, uh, afternoon of November 9th and December 7th, subject to facility availability. Uh, probably need to be in a larger facility in this room. 
and in those meetings we would review the entire strategic plan with the assistance of a facilitator to make sure that we move through the process and not get um, focused on just one uh, topic. Um, and we're expecting that there should be a robust number of people that we can choose from, and I'm sure staff has some recommendations for that. So right, I have two names that we can talk about. And then the committee further recommended we continue the discussion at our meetings in January, make a very large uh, focus of that, also supported by the facilitator. Um, concurrently, the committee uh, recommended that we should send the uh, draft uh, topics relative to the committee's assignment to those committees um, for their review, and that staff would review the base document as well and have comments available by early December. So with all that put together, the two people would edit it, get it ready for the um, meetings in January, and then we would go through that process. There was uh, some discussion of an additional steering committee for the strategic plan. I think ultimately the committee was like, eh, uh, maybe redundant given the recommendations that we have here. And so that idea was dropped from consideration. Of course, uh, at the board is free to accept, reject, modify whatever the recommendations of the committee at its, at its pleasure. Um, the topic review for the board consideration also followed a similar process. We looked at the current plan, which is actually from 2015. There's no record of a plan having been approved in 2016, even though there is a proposed plan on the website. And we compared that against the um, uh, proposed 2019 plan and came up with uh, the topics, uh, as you see at the bottom of this page, um, with the introduction, a number of topics, <coughs> including what the strategic goals would be, and then for each one of those goals, uh, a page or two for each topic. Um, we did add a page at the suggestion of uh, Lois Agency Relationships number nine, which was not on the original draft. And we modified uh, one of the topics to be water and watershed stewardship to make sure that it was a broad topic. And so those are also recommendations from the committee, again, to be accepted, rejected, and modified at the pleasure of the board. If there's any questions, be happy to answer them. I did, I did go through the uh, recordings, so the, the, the document here reflects what was in the recording. Um, did you have anything you wanted to say? I do have some questions. Under the process points for board consideration, number one bullet, the committee agreed that the strategic plan is a board document. What, can you expand on that a little bit? Mm -hmm. I think the committee understood and agreed that the strategic plan is, is, a, is that, it's a board document, uh, owned by the board and produced by the board, is basically what I took away from it being a board document. That would seem to make sense given the board sets policy for the district. And so at that level, the strategic plan is a policy document of the things that we want to focus on at a goal level and uh, specific strategic items. So what you're saying is that that would be ultimately included into the board policy manual, in your mind? Well, I don't know that it would be included in the board policy manual necessarily. Um, of course, the board could choose to do that, but... Well, doesn't the board policy manual contain all of those elements that represent what the board is responsible for? I, I think the board policy manual has a lot to do with the uh, operational aspects of the board whether or not you wanted to refer to the um, strategic plan, the board policy manual specifically, I mean, that's up to the board. I don't, I don't know that that is uh, a requirement. Okay. Here's my recommendation. I, I, I have a problem with that statement as it stands. Um, when you talk about strategic planning, you're talking about a strategy to produce a plan. The strategy itself, I agree, is a board document, because that's who should present the strategy around who's, how we're going to um, develop the strategic plan itself. 
But the strategic plan largely comes out of district staff, I believe. No, I think that would be. An, I think we might be confusing strategic plan and operating plan. Well, I'm not confusing. So, well, so there, there is a need for an operating plan to come out of the district manager, and it, it's up to him to decide how he would organize that to fulfill the goals in the strategic plan. Okay. But an operating plan and a strategic plan are very, very different things, as I'm sure you know from, from your background. But what I also know from my background is conventional wisdom is that the plan itself is the ownership of the people who are going to execute the plan. That's the operating plan. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into semantics. What I want to, what I want to say is, you know, I went to the, the Scotts Valley uh, four-hour update of their strategic plan, and it just re re reinforced to me that there is a clear difference between strategy and plan. And the strategy, the, the framework for how you're going to do the plan is the responsibility of the board. I agree with that. But the strategic plan itself largely comes out of, um, you know, we give them direction and they give us specifics. And that, in my mind, is, is the strategic plan. And as such, the strategic plan is not a board document. It's a board and district document. And that's a distinction I'm trying to put out there. Um. So... I um, I know that I've heard Stephanie say how she wished we'd get the strategic plan done so she knows where she should be going. Um, and I have to agree with Lou. It seems to me that we have to, it, it's staff, it's public, it's a lot of involvement, so... It seems like to say it's a board document just kind of says it's our document, to me. Uh, I, I tend to take things very literally, I'll admit that. It's just a number thing. But, uh, Steve, you got anything you want to say? Well, uh, I think I agree with the way Bob's defining strategic plan ownership versus operating plan ownership. Strategic plan I think should be the board's. <coughs> Purview. They should own. They should own the direction, the, the plans, the strategy going forward, where we want to go. Not how we're going to get there. The operating plan is how we're going to get to where the strategic plan says we want to be at the end of the day. So, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? The strategic plan comes first. Okay. And the and the and the staff would take that as guidance and, and develop their plans based on what the board says. This is where we want to go. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, what ask the staff? Do they agree or disagree with that? I mean, yeah, well, that's pretty I, fundamental I, assumption. Okay, I'll, I'll ask him in a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. How about you, Rick Moran? I'm thinking this. I agree with Steve and Bob that the policy is the, the strategic policy is what we're responsible for. Okay. And uh, the implementation of that goes to the staff. Now, I'm more interested in. Uh, after these meetings in weighing in. I prefer to listen to what the public has to say and what can go on in these right. meetings that are scheduled. Right, okay. Um, Rick Rogers, did you want to say anything? Well, no, I, 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 I view the strategic plan as a partnership between the board, staff, and the public. Um, everybody should have an input. Okay. And we take the brainstorming session and then we to write the strategic plan. I have received uh, an unusual amount of calls with a real concern on the mission statement, um, including from a former employee who wrote our watershed management plan, Dr. Herbert, I believe, and she emailed all of you. From Oregon? Uh, from Oregon. Yeah, she yeah. was a long-term employee that what wrote the watershed yeah. management plan, highly respectable. Um, there's a lot of concern on, on the mission statement. I have one more comment, and maybe this will help illuminate why I think the committee, and certainly from my point of view, would, would agree with this. Um, it's all about accountability. So we are accountable to the voters based on what we said we would do, and based on the plan, the policies we put together. And so from my perspective, the strategic plan is the document by which the voters hold us accountable. The operating plan is the plan by which we, 
hold the district manager accountable and also through the district manager down through staff to, so that it all flows up and all flows down. Um, and so that's why for me there's a distinction between the strategic plan and the operating plan because of the accountability aspect. Because I fully expect people to come to us and say, when we get the strategic plan done, you said you're going to do X, Y, and Z. What did you do? And We've done a lot of X, Y, and Z. That, 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 is, that is true. And there's more to do. And this is our document roadmap for being able to do that. And so that's, I think, the, the reason I look at it in, in two different uh, spheres. You know, I kind of think that we're not going to move this ahead very far until we get a facilitator to go work this out. I see a lot of different ways to advance the strategic plan, but I think we need somebody to grab these ways and help us move ahead. I think that's what the committee was recommending yes. for sure. Yes. Right. Yes. I think the sooner we move in that direction, I think the, the, the quicker we'll advance. And everybody agreed that at the committee. Yeah. No, we need a facilitator. I think we all agree to that. Um, so, can I go out to the audience? Or I, do you I want have to one other small question. On the fourth bullet item, it says that um, we will go out to the community for input on November 9th and December 7th. You realize, of course, that those are Saturdays. The committee specifically recommended that, yes. Okay. I think we would get better attendance on an evening, and that's why the history has been that way. Maybe well, why do we want? We just pick Saturdays to give people who had to work. You know, we hear that common complaint that don't hold these meetings during the day. You know, working people can't get there, so maybe one during the evening and one during Saturday. Okay, the, the board that's is easy to do. Free to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's an easy one. Yeah, yeah. That was a reason to change. To change. But that was done. Specifically to try to draw a larger crowd that did not have to work. Yeah. Okay. The Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency meetings that were on Saturdays had a lot of people there. They, there were a lot of people on Saturdays. Because sometimes people work all day and they don't really want to come to a meeting at night. But, but we have a pretty good group here. Yes, we do. Um, so let's go out to that group and who wants to speak first? Okay, Nancy. Thank you. My name is Nancy Nancy. I live here in Boulder Creek. And um, I'm here as a longtime resident as well as chair of the Valley Women's Club's Environmental Committee. First, I want to acknowledge that I share Bob Fultz's concerns about the cost effective management and the need to be frugal with ratepayers' money. And I I acknowledge that he has a strong commitment to his beliefs and goals, and I respect that. The concern is whether his proposed changes to the mission statement and strategic plan would be good in the long run, or have the potential for undermining the quality or quantity or both of water, or undermining the health of the watershed that we all depend upon in so many ways. Bob has repeatedly stressed the importance of encouraging public involvement and a promise to listen to all points of view. Um, so let's all acknowledge the thoughtfulness of Chair Henry in responding to the concerns of so many members of the public at the last meeting about the need to include the community in the process of rewriting the mission statement and the strategic plan, either or both. I commend the members of the public who came and expressed concern last meeting and the support then shown by the board in sending it to the administrative committee Administration Committee and helping to restore the process and, and the respect for process that might better involve the community. So thank you all for that. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're, we're asked to choose between three visions of the strategic plan, apparently, you know, but obviously where the place to start if you really want to involve the community is from the beginning, which is the one that was previously adopted by the board in 2015. So that seems the right place to start and then look at what the possible changes might be or might be proposed. Because if you get the public involved, you know there are going to be some other changes that weren't in, in uh, Bob's version. I am very grateful that Betsy Herbert took the time and energy to share her knowledge with you all. Those of you who aren't familiar with her, 
personally. She is an extraordinary woman who has profound respect nationwide for her understanding of watershed, of timber, of land, and how it affects water supply and quality. And she has written articles that are published and read throughout the United States. And I hope you have the chance to read the letter. Um, and, and, you know, I was going to bring up New York in my comments, and she brought it up in her letter. Um, New York City purchased their watershed to protect it. And they saved millions and millions of dollars because of that. So we don't want to undermine the ownership of the watershed um, because that's a mistake. And then she points out other issues as well. So I hope the, um, the board has read it and had the chance to consider it because she's very wise and a very thoughtful person. And I would like to second the motion that um, her words be taken into consideration and acknowledged for their value and truthfulness. And thank you for the chance for us to speak tonight. Anyone? Okay. Yes. yes. Um, Alexis Crosstu from Felton. And I also very much agree with Nancy um, regarding reconsidering the um, strategic plan from 2015. So please, please do consider it. Thank you. Um, yes, at Virginia. Um, I agree with the idea that going back to the last approved plan, it seems like the best way to start, and then to bring in a facilitator to then say to everyone, okay, well, why do you want to do it? You know, say to the board, why do you want to do a strategic plan? What, what parts do you want to change? And just take everyone through it, and then do the community in outreach and incorporate that, and it's always going to come back to the board, and the board's always going to vote on it. But if you're starting from one of the group, whether it's this board or any group in the world, <laughs> and that one person <coughs> has written a draft of the plan and then written this document. I, I went to this meeting and I heard different things and I know it's really hard to take notes. Um, the first bullet item I didn't hear, and I heard that there were maybe four public meetings, but I could have misremembered because I didn't take notes. So we all have different ways of remembering and everything. I just in order to feel that everyone, that it's fair, that everyone have an equal voice. And, um, <coughs> and the way to do that is start from the last approved plan, bring in a facilitator, go to everyone and get the input, bring the draft back, and then the board approves it. And then there's not this conflict that happens. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Thank you. Uh, Jim? It's Jim Mosier from Felton. Um, I did um, a review of this, the strategic plan from 2015 and uh, Director Foltz's plan and the document of the administration committee, and I reflected on it having gone to the environmental committee yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, what happened in that meeting I think is relevant to this discussion because um, what happened there was that there was work done on the fire management plan and the pest control plan. And I want to commend the committee for the thoughtful discussion that happened there and uh, uh, moving forward on these two critical topics for us in the Valley. They're both ambitious and address critical issues for our district and for all residents of the Valley. The committee discussed the importance of having comprehensive plans with long-term objectives that encompass not just the water district and its properties, but the entire Valley. The committee discussed the importance of engaging strategic partners and educating the public, particularly landowners adjacent to, the land, to, to our district lands. It was a wide-ranging discussion, and the committee is soliciting community involvement, including uh, Dr. Ford, who's sitting next to me, who is very involved in the fire uh, management plan development, and the staff is actively engaged in developing the necessary expertise to promote future implementation. These are ambitious goals and strategies, and I think they reflect the very best of our district and what we have to offer for the Valley. But alas, these plans are going to cost money, and they're going to require a lot of staff time. In fact, you'll be asked later by the committee to approve a $10,000 con consultant contract for the fire management plan to get the, because of the urgency of developing it. <coughs> So having gone to that meeting and reflecting on uh, what I heard 
and then reviewing the current strategic plan and Dr. Director Fultz's draft alternative plan, and then the committee's proposal for how to proceed, it brought a number of concerns. Under the current strategic plan, we're not addressing these two issues directly, although other documents developed under its umbrella do address them, clearly envisions the district adopting the approach discussed at the Environmental Committee. Watershed protection, engaging strategic partners, public education, in short, an expansive view of the district's obligations and goals to protect the valley and engaging its residents. Director Fulce's plan, on the other hand, would refocus the district's activities placing cost reductions and infrastructure needs as a primary, if not exclusive, uh, focus for the district. As it says in the plan, uh, reinforcing the, the mission statement, the proposed mission statement, every dollar that isn't essential and necessary to deliver water or needed to meet regulatory requirements will be channeled into infrastructure. The draft plan would delete the extensive section of the current plan regarding building strategic partnerships, would seek to divest the district's watershed lands not directly tied to water delivery, cut funds for maintaining and protecting them, and place public education on the back burner. It certainly suggests a much narrower scope for the Environmental Committee to be working under and would make success more difficult since the district would be responsible for much narrower land holdings and would have much less uh, funding available. It also would put funding for an expanded program addressing fire management and pest management in the valley into question. I, won't mention, uh, I was going to mention Betsy Herbert uh, and her letter. I agree with the previous speakers about how important that is to consider, and I think it provides an excellent analysis of how the contrasting views uh, put in the draft proposal from Director Fultz and the current plan. Because it is such a radical departure from the current plan, and indeed the direction of the district uh, and the work of the district over the last two decades, I believe it's critical that the board ensure adequate time and opportunity for ratepayers and strategic partners to review and participate in the strategic planning process. The process should encourage public participation and engaging stakeholders. I believe it is critical the process begin with the current plan and encourage the board to use it as a foundation document. The timetable and proposed process, in my opinion, is not adequate to reach those goals. I want to end by saying <coughs> that I am deeply involved with the Felton Library Friends over the last 15 years, one of the founders, and I'm happy to report that through the hard work of countless volunteers, we've successively worked with county and library agencies as well as SLVWD to build our new Felton Library and Discovery Park, which will open in January. Community support has been overwhelming, both in terms of time and financial support. We passed two bond measures by large majorities. The community came together in an exciting way to bring what I hope will be a fantastic community resource. I tell this story because I firmly believe it demonstrates what is possible here in SLB when we work together on a common vision and common goals. I believe that despite our past differences and conflict, we all in this room have shared values regarding our valley and the importance of maintaining and protecting it for generations to come. I hope the district can use this strategic planning process to build bridges, bring us together, to find common ground and develop a plan that will meet all of our shared goals. Watershed protection, clean, safe, reliable water supply, efficiency, affordability, outstanding service, and community engagement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I agree. Um, Just any other, uh, Elaine? Um, Elaine Presco, Felton. I agree with everyone. Uh, I just want, I just have one question for you, Director Folt. And I'm not happy with your changes in the mission statement, but it would really help me. I know how deliberate you are, and I know how detailed uh, you'd like to be. So I know you had good reason to make those, to write that mission statement the way you did, but I don't understand it. I don't understand the reasons behind it. And it would be very helpful if I understood why you felt the need to make those changes. And at an appropriate time. It Maybe not now, but I yes. think, sure, at an appropriate time, but tonight we're really focused on the process, not the content of the, at least that's the way the agenda item is written. Yes. Um, Debbie? Yes, Deborah Lowen, on Pico. I did not prepare a speech, like many people. But in listening to everyone, I don't see 
any logical reason to go back to the 2015 strategic plan. Um, if you read about strategic plans and how they work or don't work, most of them are shelved, and I would definitely put the 2015 plan under the shelf category. It was a very long document that was subsequently ignored after it was done. 2016 updated it by cutting it down, and it was never adopted. I'd like to thank Director Foltz for putting together all the things that three people here ran on in a platform. There was a lot of robust public discussion already in the last year. One year ago, we were talking about all of these things. Voters went and they made their wishes known. They put three people on the board who supported what is in Mr. Foltz's strategic plan. And I went back and looked at some of the platform things under Foltz Henry Swan. Develop an integrated pest management plan. And we have Director Moran who's going to ram that through because he feels very strongly about that. So all of you behind me, I think you probably voted for them because they were going to push for the integrated pest management plan. There isn't one in the district. Yeah, Update the watershed management plan. I'm, excuse me. You don't need to attack us. I'm not attacking you. Yes. I'm bringing yeah. oh, stop, 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 stop. Go ahead and we, finish, we, Debbie. We have a lot of information that gets out in the public that this board isn't doing. They don't represent all of everybody, but they are. Update the watershed management plan using best practices. Um, engage public participation. A big hole that was missing in the last, a, la a year ago. We have now committees with lots of public members, a lot of debate, really good debate. That's a good thing. Um, prioritizing and repairing upgrading projects and district fire management plan and analyzing fire flow capabilities. We're, we're in the middle of doing that with a really good water plan that's inventorying the whole system to get us going there. So, of course you support that, yes? This is all in... Mr. Folsom's strategic plan. All the points that voters said, yes, we want that, that's in there. So why go to a document that is, doesn't relate to anything with this board and their plan? Um, I just encourage the board to pick it up. Pick it up and be current. Answer to the voters. We were very clear it was a really good voter turnout. There was really, really, really good public discussion that went on. And the voters made clear what they wanted and what they expect out of this water district and the direction. And that is expressed in the, the most recent strategic plan that has been submitted for consideration. I encourage you to go with that. And please don't back it up. We don't need to back up. Thank you. <coughs> uh, back there. Glenn Lyons. Uh, it's funny that she said all that because before she got up, what I was going to say was pretty much in direct contradiction. My sense of the last election was the, the slate, and I realize this is uh, Mr. Foltz's proposal, not anybody else's, but the slate ran on fiscal conservatism around stuff, but also ran very strongly on that they were going to be good environmental stewards. People took a quarter of a cup of glycemate that was hand delivered onto some plants and turned it into Hillary Clinton's Benghazi, you know, uh, computer thing. And but the sense was that I think I what I believe is that if that proposal had been front and center, you people would have lost. So the fiscal part I get, you absolutely ran on that. People voted for that. I'm no way denying that. But I think people also felt like, well, these guys are going to tighten things up, but they promised us they're going to be good environmentalists. Good environmentalists doesn't mean we just don't use glycemate. Good environmentalism means you protect this watershed. And we're not just tree hugger idealists. We believe that that's long term the fiscally responsible thing to do. And I think Betsy Herbert's analysis shows that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Virgil? Please. No, you go first. 
Well, I just I wanted to agree with the previous speaker and the earlier speakers that um, I completely agree that the community should be involved, and I did vote for watershed protection personally. Uh, and did you state your name? Sorry, I'm Karen Holm. I'm resident of Belton. Mm -hmm. And what I'm I understand the need to cut costs, but this is we're accountable not just to the current ratepayers, we're accountable to our future and future generations. And I'm really concerned about all the things you know what Betsy Herbert said, but. In resource management, there's all sorts of examples where if you absolutely minimize the current cost, then you end up paying later. And if we start selling properties and not protecting, and we put environmental protection second, then we will ultimately pay. And it may not be us, it may be our children, but we need to protect our resources. And I think that's what we all what people voted for. That was a priority. Thank you. Virgil? Yes, uh, Virgil Champlin, Brookdale. <clears throat> I'm hearing a lot of non sequiturs here. Um, we're, not, we're not talking about the strategic plan. We're talking about how do we get to the strategic plan? Mm -hmm. How do we specify our values and come up with a mission statement that expresses that, those values in a, I guess, a, a business-friendly way? Um, can we please return to having this discussion a couple of times in the right forum? Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't let's derail this agenda item. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, may I, yes. may I say one thing? Uh, using the, the old um, strate uh, strategic plan um, is, is a really bad idea unless you're willing to examine and uncover the, in the assumptions that were built into that plan. So I don't <laughs> care if you use it, but we're going to have a lot of argument about why it should or should not be there, and that may not be very productive. Thank you. Thank you. Any other pause? Oh, hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara Springer. Um, I, I, we are talking about process, and thank you all so much for talking about process. Um, I have a couple process statements, questions, comments, and then I do want to say something about the, some historical stuff here. First off, in terms of process, thank you so much for opening this up. And I understand the discussion you were having early, earlier. Because the watershed and our environment related to the watershed are so absolutely critical to all our lives, it is important that this document be owned. I don't care if you call it a board document, but you know, it really, the creation of it really needs to be owned by the community, the board, the staff, everybody. So please do that and be sure we have enough time to do that. Um, and, and thank you for Virgil, to Virgil for saying that. I agree with um, certainly, you know, Virginia and, and you know, Jim and, and, and Alexis and Nancy. <laughs> if I left anybody out, I'm sorry. <laughs> you um, forgot somebody, I think. Uh-oh. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, I do want to say something about history, okay? Um, I feel like I'm a newcomer here. I've been here 36 years. The, um, for over 40 years, this, this valley has been known for its environmental stewardship and its environmental bent. And I've always been so proud to live here because of that. When people first come in here, they don't understand how fragile this environment is. We are 25 to 30,000 people, depending on what day of the week it is, um, living in an extremely fragile mountainous terrain, okay? And for that reason, we have to be good environmental stewards. We cannot focus just on the bottom line of today. So please, please, please help to protect this for our children and major changes to our strategic plan are, and I realize that's not a process statement anymore, so I'll, I'll cut it short, but you know, it, it, we need to protect this for our kids. We have a responsibility to do that. <coughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Um, yes. Lee Summers? Awesome. And, um, <coughs> I've been hearing, um, it sounds like the beginning into the process, I think Roger was right about we need to stick to what the, the agenda item is here, and it sounds to me like <coughs> the, the question is what document do we start with? Um, and we, 
2016, 2015, there was a document that was agreed on and, and uh, many people um, approved of it and there was, it was a lot of uh, input by, by the public and there was a whole process to get this document. And then we have another one that was a, a possible uh, document that was um, had very limited um, input. And I would think that we want to start with a document that had a lot of input and a lot of agreement before we start with something that was, had so few, just one person that pretty much put it together. And so it's, it's that, that starting point for the rest, for all these other statements to come up in the public meeting and to have a more thorough conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and I would think we would start with that 2015 document that was passed and agreed on. Anyone else? Let's see. Paul Macklis, Felton. Um, boards I'm familiar with, it is typical when revising a pre previously approved document, you start with the document that was approved whenever it was and you make changes to it. That is the procedure I'm familiar with. I think it's highly unusual to have a draft from one member of the board that be, is the beginning of the discussion. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, back to the board for any comments? Yeah. Just one quick, just one quick. Yes. The 2016 strategic plan almost made it over the finish line. Minutes reflect that it was one meeting away of being uh, of being approved to be polished and then brought back. Um, I think we should move us ahead and, and talk about a facilitator and pick maybe the 2016 and the 2019 and start with both of those and a facilitator try to jump start this what what if we didn't start with anything what if we had a facilitator well, we do have, and just we do have uh, the 2015 was approved we do have a document i know we do as I'm cumbersome just... as it may be but and we do have a proposed 2019 yeah. but we need to move this ahead somehow uh, well, I agree with that. Part of we need a facilitator. Job. That would be the facilitator's job. To hopefully, read all the plans and uh, hopefully you can put all three of them in front. And hopefully we can jumpstart this process, start with the mission statement, get so, some brainstorm going, and get it So back. with November 7th, we'd hire a facilitator. Possibly. Well, we aren't going to do it tonight. No, but I mean... But, but I... Um, and... Uh, we would decide who the two people who are going to... Okay, my understanding is the facilitator um, writes everything down. She runs, he, she, whatever, runs the meeting um, and writes it all down and gives it to whoever, let's say two people and maybe uh, the district manager. And it's written that way and, and so those people aren't really writing anything. They're taking what they got from the, the meeting with the facilitator. <coughs> That's my understanding how that works. If I'm wrong, somebody tell me. Well, they, they would uh, be doing edit. They would be more of an editor at that point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's what Right. But um, so, so it seems if we're going to move on this, we need to decide something at the November 7th meeting about what we're starting with and who the facilitator is going to be and who the two people, and I would like to add the district manager to help um, take those notes from the facilitator and put them in an in a understandable document. Uh, and then it goes back. I'm sorry, are you saying we don't take any action tonight? Well, what are we going to action on tonight? We don't have facilitator names. Well, well so, so, I think, so I think the recommendation of the committee made, again, the board can you know, choose to not do that, but the recommendation of the committee was to select a document, appoint the two people who would be the editors, to direct staff to get an administrator to schedule meetings for November 9th and December 7th and follow the process that's here. If what you're going to do is say, well, we're going to delay all that till November 7th, well, I mean, now we just lost another okay. month. And I don't think that was the committee's sense that we wanted to do that. Okay. The committee felt that we needed to move through. The, by the way, I think strongly supported by staff that we need to move through this 
and not continue to delay it. Okay, so that's the case. I would like to recommend that that Lou Ferris and myself are the two people and Rick Rogers works with us I, to come up with the plan. Yeah, I think if you're going to do that, I'd recommend that it be Lou and Rick if you don't want me to do it. Lou and Rick? Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with Lou and Rick. I am. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just, you don't want me to I, do if you want two board members, which is what I was assuming, was two board well, it, members. It didn't have to be, but I think that would probably be better given that this is something that the board's going to use for being yeah. accountable. Two board members and Rick Rogers is what I think. Lou and me and Rick Rogers. Of is course, it, I haven't asked is there Lou. any conflict with committees or anything like that, Jim, that you see brought up issues? Uh, give me a moment and I will check it against the list of committee assignments. <clears throat> Lois and Lou are not on the same committee. Santa Margarita. We're what? We're Santa not Margarita. on the same committee. It's just Santa, Santa Margarita, but that's a JPA. Yeah, it's different. Uh, that should be fine, yes. Right. Yeah. But um, my suggestion was Lou and Rick. It's fine with me. Whatever. Lou and Rick. No, they do serve on they're, they're on the environmental Oh, they're both together. on committees together. Environmental <coughs> and engineering. And, and engineering. So. That won't work. That won't work. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was... So I'm thinking, Lou and me. That could be Lou and me. Because mm -hmm. we don't serve any committees at all today. No, so and Lou and I, I it, it GPA, doesn't matter about the GPA. I understand that, but Lou yeah. and do you have an opinion, Ray? No, sir. Okay. He's not sticking out of this. <laughs> I guess it's up to I me. definitely would like to see at least two board members because to help move this along to get as much consensus as we can as we move along. I, I would suggest it would be Bob and I and Rick because I don't want to lose all the, the work that Bob has done today. That's my only reason there. And that's the reason I don't want Bob. His work is there for us to look at. It's not like it is going to vaporize. But we can have a vote on it. Okay, it's up to the board anyway. It's not up to me. Rick? Well, I think they're both good points. Bob put a lot of work into this, and um, but we're all, as a statement, uh, the, the phrase that Rick Rogers uses, is it, he'll have another bite at the apple. Um, so he'll always be able to have his input into this process. So I don't mind if he's on it or not, as long as he understands that he has uh, the opportunity, and he, I'm sure he does, the opportunity to have another bite at the apple. <laughs> like that, huh? I do. <laughs> this being a big apple. Okay. I don't have a problem either way. You and Bob, you and Rick, you Bob and Rick and Lois. No, no me and Bob couldn't, and Rick and, and, and We couldn't have more than two, right, Jane? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, it, it's yeah. just your you guy on committees. So it's got to be... <laughs> it's got to be you two or you two. Yeah? Is that what you're saying? Well, or so could it be... It could be and me and him and... Uh, him and Bob. Steve, it could be you and anybody. Oh, you know, so Steve can. <laughs> so. Shall we let the public weigh in? No. No? They already voted once for the big break. What do you mean? <laughs> you don't want to hear from the public? No, I do. I, I oh, don't. okay. Well, we have a lot of voices that aren't here as well that we need to consider, as, yeah. I've, as I've commented okay. before, I mean, be that, that there is a there's a balancing act here. We represent everybody, but yeah. it's not just the folks in the room that we have to answer to. We do. Right. So, so I can't be on it because my folks aren't in the room. No, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 I just had. Uh, I, I didn't get called on the list. 
Okay, okay. We can go, go, with that. go ahead. Can go again. Um, so I'm hearing this and I'm thinking, of, I've done a lot of strategic plans, and so the way it usually works is um, there's a person, outsider, that comes in and then works with one or two people and uh, with a back and forth, so you have a document, you have meetings, maybe you have some key person interviews, maybe you have a survey, you have, so you have inputs from the community in certain ways, and then that facilitator meets with staff and interviews them and the board members, maybe one-on-one -on -one or maybe in a group, takes all of that in and then gives all of that back out to the, even one person can do it, it doesn't even need to be two, but the but once you get a draft, then all of you see it. Yeah, of course. And then you all provide input. So this question of one or two, it's not that important, really, because you're all going to have input into the document once it's at a place where the, the um, key board person and the outside person have a draft. And then they say, hey, well, here's the draft. What do you all think? So it's not like, uh, yeah, it's very participatory for everyone to be involved. And when you have a, once you have the facilitator on board, yeah, just a process thing. At these uh, meetings that being proposed November 9th and December 7th, that the public would have input in, are we suggesting that only two board members could participate? On any no. One of those no, 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 no. 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 Yeah, the, what the committee suggested would the be. Act then? Well, the two members is. is no, first of all, they'd be full board meetings. Yeah. All board members can participate. But the focus of those meetings was on the community input side, not That's the right. board deliberation side. Sorry if that wasn't clear in the, in the draft. But it was mainly to gather input. input. From the, from the, from the input public. and create a plan. And then, well, and then out of that, you hand that input to the editors, to, to, to board members. To board members mm -hmm. And they do that. But yes, of course, it'll come back to the, to the board. Um, and the board will have the final decision but I, on that. I mean, I, I think one of the reasons that I think I like the idea of Lou and I is that we do have a couple of different viewpoints on how this, I mean, based on the earlier conversation, and in terms of reaching um, a mutually acceptable solution, if we can get there, then it probably is a good thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> being a female, I'm going to have a different viewpoint than all four of you guys, probably. <laughs> but uh, Barbara, yeah, I'm sorry. You, you, um, I think you guys are talking about hiring somebody, hiring a facilitator. Right. Let them set the how the structure. I don't think you need to set uh, something on November and something on December. They may have a different recommendation for how to do it from their years and years of experience of running strategic plans. So and you don't have to pick the first document either. They'll they'll do all that. And they'll help you set that whole structure. Yeah. But originally, that's what I was saying. But I also said that two people at that time. Mm -hmm. Well, again, so. again, this was the recommendation from the committee. One of the reasons to send it to the committee was to have a more in-depth conversation uh, with people who, and we did have people there that had experience and provided input. And this was the consensus they came to. Now, if we don't want to do that, that's fine. But again, I think the consensus of everybody in there is let's move this along. Um, and the facilitator we can have on board by that time. Assuming we give staff direction to go hire that as part of the motion as well. So all I'm saying is if we don't have a facilitator, what are we going to do before November 9th? Are we, are we at November 7th going to pick the facilitator, pick the two people? Why would we even pick two people tonight when we don't know what the facilitator would want? I, I believe the Again, I'm just going to the recommendation of the committee. Staff hires a facilitator, and the facilitator, presumably, since it's a board meeting, would work with district manager and yourself to put together the agenda and how the meeting was going to work. So, but, the, but, but would be staff hired. is going to hire the facilitator? That's what the committee recommended. Okay. Well, 
That's fine with me. I think it would be based on, I think we would bring this back to the, the first board meeting in November with a list of facilitators. Then you're, not, then you're not doing a meeting on the 9th. I mean, I could go out and hire a facilitator tomorrow. We have two facilitators, Robert Galooch and uh, Virginia Wright, that, that's, uh, that are very capable. Uh, Director Ferris has, has seen Robert Galooch. Um, made co positive comments. Uh, we've had discussions, both Chair Henry and I have discussions with, her, um, with Virginia Wright uh, about being a facilitator for the district. We have two able people that we could select from. Um, on, if the board wishes for the manager to make that decision, uh, move ahead and make a decision. What is, what is Mr. Billowich's race? I have, we haven't got that far. Um, I haven't talked to him personally. It was just a recommendation from one of our directors that really liked his presentation and, and the way he worked at Scotts Valley. Now, we, the district has used Mr. Deleuze before in a different capacity, um, but I wouldn't let that cloud our judgment. What okay. capacity was that? He did the uh, staffing study. Hmm. As a side to the uh, <laughs> um, finance report. The cost of service study. The cost of service study. Yeah. So I wasn't sure on that. But that, I wouldn't let that cloud your judgment because that was a different time and different direction was given to him Fair enough. from the manager. So I'm, and that would not be that situation this time around. Virgil? Yes, sorry to bother you again, but uh, uh, when I heard Mr. Deloche's name, I started having a seizure. Bill, <laughs> um, are you a facilitator? <laughs> You're having a seizure. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I attended part of the, the Scotts Valley um, process last um, Friday. Right, okay. right. <clears throat> a facilitator has to be a kind of a neutral mm -hmm. um, person. Sure. He spent the first hour setting the ground rules and the suggestions for the direction to go in. Not facilitating, dictating. That to me is not what we want. And um, I have also read several other published things of his, and he provides no background, no footnotes, no bibliography. There's nothing I can do from his documents to verify an understanding of where he's coming from. And so, um, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but I had to mention that and that's probably a, a, that's a, an alligator-ridden path. So, Virginia, are you bossy? Am I bossy? I'm a believer in using what exists and, and listening and putting things together um, so people can have clarity and make decisions from that. And so I don't know anything really about environmental policy or about water districts or any of that, but there's so many experts here that I don't think you need to recreate the wheel. Like, I kind of agree with Bob and some of that. It's like you don't need to, you've got operations, but you've got a lot of things that are already done. So it's not, I don't think, you just need a good listener, a good writer, and a good connect the dots, like, here's this document, check that out, you know, that kind of way, and, and good facilitation. Yeah. I'm bossier on facilitation, but I'm process, <laughs> but not content. We've held several meetings with, with Ms. Wright, uh, with Director Ferris, and Director Henry, and, and talked about how to put together strategic plans. Sounds very professional and a neutral, and we discussed that, uh, about being neutral, and, how to move it forward. Uh, you guys could add, you know, I mean, you could add if what your thoughts are too. Or I can go out and look for somebody else, or if somebody has a name. Lewis, I'd like to make a motion. Please, please. Uh, are we done talking, everybody? Uh, <clears throat> Mark Lee. I know of a excellent facilitator. He's not from the area. He lives in Santa Cruz. And he's worked on water issues, uh, transportation issues, and has people that have been bogged down in organizations to get plans prepared. He's excellent. He's a psychologist. He's very gentle, and he knows how to handle conflict. He's extremely intelligent. His name is Rick Longinati, and he and his wife do 
uh, non-conflicting um, uh, non communication seminars at the, non at the Nonviolent Communication Seminar Center on Ocean Street. So if you want me to uh, talk to him, I can, you know, put him in contact with Greg. He's well known. Yeah, he, he's got a very good reputation. And he's a neutral. Okay. You still want to make a motion? Yes, I do. Okay. I move that we appoint uh, Director Fultz and Director Harris to be the editors of a draft strategic plan and to have District Manager Rick Rogers hire a facilitator, either Virginia Wright or Rick Longinati. Longinati, for a public meeting to be held on November 9th and December 7th. Public meetings. Do you need to specify a starting plan? That sounds like that was one of the requirements. Uh, no. Okay. I'm not. Let, let, let him pick it at the meeting or at the prep yeah. thing. Okay. This is me here at that. We can amend that motion if you want. Is By it one motion or two motions? It's one motion is all yeah. I heard. Yeah, I know he read one. Yeah. It's two different items. My, my only concern with the motion, if I may interrupt, um, is the dates without having the, everybody in the room that whoever we hire as a facilitator. We should try to get as close to these dates as possible, but may not be able to meet those dates without having that oh, person. So you don't want those well, dates? I'd, I'd like to get those. They could be target think, dates. Uh, those are target dates. So, uh, I'd yeah. like to target those dates. So we had, a, we had a discussion in the committee about this, as you recall. And I think the consensus of the committee was that November uh, 16th was... Um, Maybe too late. Now Thanksgiving is since it's the fourth Thursday, it's the twenty eighth this year. So I, that's a consideration. But if we if we think we can, we can make days. it, because if you're going to skip November, then you're now you're pushing us into February or March, basically for an end game. So that's the only concern. There. I understand. As long as we're moving ahead, I mean that that's the key. That it just doesn't stall. I just don't know we can make those dates and if you put it in a motion, I'm not sure what I'm going to do if the facilitator can't make it, then what, come back? With well, dates? So Rick could just change and it I to target dates, right? So yeah. we can, that can, motion can die and somebody else can make another motion. I'm just trying to get the ball. Yeah, we need I, to speak yeah. yeah. I'd, like I'd like to throw out just a legal concern related to this. Um, I'd recommend that any motion along these lines be a little bit open-ended, um, that the district manager um, could hire a facilitator. It should have a not to exceed amount, um, not and to consider the two named candidates as well as any other appropriate candidates, so that the staff can do what they need to do in terms of um, satisfying um, competitive selection to the extent that's necessary. Okay. So I would second Rick's motion as modified by Gina. You <laughs> 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 didn't have a number. Well, the number, whatever the number is, it has to be approved by the board at the, the earlier meeting in November, right? You have to come back with candidates and say this is how much you're going to be. Do you want to approve? Well, that's not kind of what the motion was. The motion was to go out and procure. Hire okay, as modified by her and you. <laughs> no, so, okay. so, 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 we, here we, here we, we can just let this die, all right? Mo it doesn't have a second. Motion fails, it doesn't have a second. And then somebody else can make a motion that clarifies the points that we just made here. Or, Rick, we can, you can make that motion. I mean, I think you're on the right track. Okay, I, I, I will, but let's let this motion die so I can rewrite the number. Go, 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 go. All right. You also probably talk about a number. What was that? A number. I said $100,000 per meeting. That would be good. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> he said less than $100,000 per meeting. Oh, less than that would be good. <laughs> Realistically, are we talking $10,000? Are we talking. Uh, I, I, I would say it, it depends, but I'd probably put a cap 
25, cap of $25,000. Of course, that could be, whatever the amount is, could be increased by amendment. Sure, we could always come back. Yeah. Whoa. That's well, a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Obviously, we're going to look for the best possible price. And we'll get, and it's going to be even harder. The price is being hourly rate, it'll be a services rate, and we'll try to pencil that out because we don't have any set amount, we're not sure set amount of meetings or set amount of work. Um, and I, we're not even sure what the plan is that we're gonna to look to update. So you wanna cut it back to 15, and then we can, 15 would be good. I mean, obviously once we get off and, and running here, we're, we're, we're committed. Yep. And we surely don't wanna say, yeah. well, we're out of money, we're stopping. So, so are, are those two candidates enough for you, or do you need to uh, have an open-ended uh, process where you can look to well, other people? My concern is they both come back and say, we can't, I can't do it in November, December. Um, you know, that may decide for me. Or, right up front, or one can do it and one can't, and those dates, that may help me make a decision. So how would you like that? I just I pick from those two. Okay. And I'll use price and availability as as the uh, selection process. You wouldn't want open ended. What if you get both of them that say they can't? They can't. No. <laughs> <laughs> we could what if all night, but yeah. But that's what leaving it open ended it allows you to pull in a third candidate if you right. wanted to. No, I would just say you know, and or another candidate that the, the district manager or the right. staff finds that's. You know, more appropriate or a better suited, a better fit. More qualified. If the glove fits, well, I'll never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you feel comfortable with that? I, I, I think I mean, we're I done spoke, with public comment. Obviously, I have not spoke to, to, to Rick, um, so I'm not sure. I, I We have spoke to, to Virginia Wright, and she's commented that she's available. So, um, okay. I'd lobby for Virgil, frankly. <laughs> Yeah, Virgil. <laughs> All right, we're trying to get something done here. Um, I agree. So where, where are we? That previous motion has disappeared. But, but you were in the process of yeah okay. putting forth a, a second motion. Right. Right. Yeah. So motion. here's a um, move to appoint Director Fultz and Director Ferris to be the editors of a draft strategic plan and have District Manager Rick Rogers hire a facilitator, either Virginia Wright or Rick Longinati, um, for good. target, to not to exceed $15,000, to facilitate public meetings on December, on November 9th and December 7th as target dates. Amen. I think the only thing that was missing there might have been or another facilitator. I was going to say, I, I, would, I would amend that to include, I think Stephanie had a good point that, okay. why, why do we specify who you should pick? You know, you, you, you do the process of determining who you think the right facilitator is. We will agree to abide by whatever decision you make. Okay. Or another qualified candidate. Or another, or another qualified, qualified candidate. candidate. Yes. So Sorry. Virginia Wright, Rick Longinati, or another qualified candidate. That's just I like the idea of you all seem to agree on these two. That's that's half the battle getting off the start by having someone that you all can agree upon. That that works for me. But I will do my job and have a facilitator. That's so the I'll resolution. Second that. Okay, we got a motion and a second. You want to call the question, Paul? <coughs> Director Falls. Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Aye. And if I can just ask a question relative to the document that we will use, would that be selected later then? Is that the intention at this point? Seemingly so. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's up to us. I, well, I don't know that it's up to us. I would say with uh, Richard McCullough. The facilitator. The facilitator. The facilitator. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Plead your case okay. and then pick well, a document, we'll burn see. the other two and start. There we go. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, uh, next item is board policy manual update. Um, yes, the uh, recommended the board review the memo and discuss possible action for updating the 2019 board policy manual. Uh, the district 2019 board policy manual was adopted by the board on December 13, 2018. The board policy manual was revised, excuse me, and adopted on January 17, 2019. And the board policy manual was again revised and adopted on February 7, 2019. After review, uh, the admin uh, committee agreed that the 2019 board policy manual is again in need of revision and proposes the following changes to uh, provide flex flexibility on board meeting days to reflect actual scheduling, Section 9A, um, harmonize Section 8A and 9I uh, regarding individual directors' ability to place items on a meeting agenda and clarify availability of minutes in Section 13. Um, delete requirement for public members of committees to file Form 700, Section 14. Uh, reduce special meeting stipend to $25, uh, Section 15. And add additional requirements prior to the board approving a defense in the event of a conflict of interest, second, uh, Section 23. And with that, I'll turn it over to either the um, legal counsel well, has any comments or turn it back over to the board. There, there was... Um, one of the things I asked about in that admin meeting on this was um, uh, controlling district uh, uh, board members um, spending district money and um, it, it seems that isn't happening. Um, I don't know that so, that was actually discussed and agreed to. It, it was a discussed. And well, you wanted to pin me down, and I didn't want to say what I wanted to say. Oh. But, and okay, but, I, mean, I, I kind of said it, but. Well, I mean, so I'm looking at, it as we were going through the meeting, just for everybody's benefit, what we were trying to do is get to specific language that we could use for the document because that's what needs to come back to the board and in lieu of any specific language it's well we can always update it later I mean it's not or we can update it now it's not that this is cast in concrete because no, it's only a recommendation. I, I know it's right. not cast so in you concrete. Have, if you have specific language recommendations you'd like to put in here. I, I would have would to have it. Gina help me with it. Okay, that's well, fine. I thought that we did, we did discuss this, yes, but it was discussed discuss and the language was already present, and now there's an issue, we need it just to address the issue. Yeah, That's we need to the address the issue. Um, and there was no real need to be changed to the actual board policy manual. It would be a new, it would be an addition that would have to be written, I guess. What is the language that's being referred to? It, it's set, it's on page six here, and it says, um, where does it say that? Um, prohibits, intends to deter a member of the pub, oh, no, no, that isn't it. Um, oh, it's right above, it's right, role of individual directors. Um, Individual directors may not commit the district to any policy, act, or expenditure unless authorized by the board of directors. That's what it says. And, and that I brought that up at the meeting. And not, not to speak for, for Chair Henry, though, but I do believe that she's referring to individual directors talking to legal counsel. Uh, with no authorization, and I, 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 I don't believe. I believe that this covers that. We just need to discuss speaking with legal counsel. I'm not sure if you feel free to discuss that in an open meeting. It seems there's no subject matter. I guess we could. Uh, could. Okay. I know you and I have had the discussion. Yeah, um, but we've talked generally. Right, but I think this 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 freight or this. This clause covers it, but now it's just to discuss, is that an expenditure? 
we can talk to legal and board members can speak. Individual board members talk to legal counsel. Okay. Well, is that I'm Lois? I don't want to speak for you, but is that the issue? Yeah, it's not that I'm trying to keep board members from the attorney, but um, it seems that it ought to be uh, time sensitive, or I, I I don't even know how to say what I'm I'm I I, I can't I I'm assuming I can't say what I want to say because I saw things in the bill pay, uh, or I mean uh, uh, your bills, and what the items were for, and I don't think I can talk about that in this meeting. Director Henry reviews, as the board chair, she reviews your itemized billing list, not the public mm -hmm. billing list. I right. do believe that's what she's pertaining to. Okay. Well. In terms of privilege, what can be discussed in public, you can you can talk about who communicated with whom. A general description may be okay, but if you start to get more specific, or, you know, or that that's dangerous territory. So you start right. to get into I, I, I in theory, like, that. can a board member call legal and talk on the phone for four hours? I mean. No, no, I'm not. We don't have that. I mean, there's, no, there's not but, that but I mean, for if that's an expenditure. Yeah. it's an expenditure. But if if it's oh, how do I even well, say this? How, if, if if it's to say, uh, look at somebody possibly who wants to uh, apply for the board, and to try to find. I, Ways to stop it. I, I, am I going well, to? Well, I just I, I think what you're suggesting is that you you would have concerns if board members were talking to council to advance their individual political agenda from right. a general oh, okay. board. Um, All right, you got it. Okay. That's why you're the attorney. <laughs> um, I I have concerns, and I about interpreting this particular language this way. And let me say, I don't, I don't oppose, I hate to be talking about what I do and don't oppose in terms of policy, because I don't really think that's my role generally. But I, um, I guess I will, because this so directly pertains to me. I don't think there's a problem having a policy that sets some ground rules about talking to counsel. Um, I'm concerned about saying that this language does that because it says it has to be authorized by the board of directors and um, it simply isn't practical to have the board make a decision because most of those decisions would have to be made in a public meeting to have the board decide who gets to talk to counsel about what because we'd be sitting in here talking about who gets to talk to me about what and the privilege is gone at that point. Um, so I think there may be a way to address it, but I don't think this language does it. Because I've had the directors contact me directly and ask about a conflict of interest, a possible mm -hmm. conflict of interest, and I prefer that they call legal counsel directly. There's no reason to, to go through me to go to legal counsel to get so there's nothing lost in the translation. And then plus, Gina will normally be follow-up questions, so I have referred directors straight to legal counsel. Um, I've had Brownat questions and, and from new directors, and I refer <coughs> them straight to legal counsel. So I may be a little part of this problem um, about referring. I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, and I, you know, my own point of view, I, I don't think there's a lot of inappropriate conversations going on with, with counsel. I, I think I get called upon when legal advice is needed for specific issues. However, um, I think there's a, and again, this is just my my opinion, <laughs> but I, I think there can be a real issue if the expense is, is a problem, and there's a need to rein that in. Um, then there's there's got to be a way that you that you can do that by limiting, you know, access to my time, and I, I think that's reasonable. Um, but it, it it's it could become troubling if it. Um, if there's too much of a content filter in terms of who can talk to me about what, because 
I, I don't want that. Okay. And then move this to a closed session topic and deal with it more easily that way? I think it might be, uh, it would, if there's a if there's specific language that you want to talk to legal counsel about to modify this, it seems appropriate that you would do that. I know I can talk to her. Yeah. I only I tend to only talk to her when she's on the clock, um, but uh, I talked to her a little bit tonight about it. I could help create something if there's a desire to do that. Okay. Specifically in regards to speaking legal counsel. Right, in regards to um, finding a way to um, control legal cost, ensure that communications with counsel are for appropriate reasons with some kind of a cost control uh, aspect to it. Okay. This, so you and I can work on that then and bring it to the next board meeting. Okay. So should we adopt this policy tonight and then come back again and readopt when we have a new well, okay. clause? Because that's where we're at right now. Yeah, I know we're at that. There, so. there, is, there is one other um, thing I wanted to mention. Um, because this was sent to legal counsel for review, and uh, she mentioned that the addition of forwarding a request to FPPC for a formal determination um, effectively is moot because the FPPC would not respond in a timely enough fashion to be able to use it as input. So I think we have 20 or 10 days to make a decision, and FPPC's minimum, I think, is 30 days. And maybe longer for a line now. Um, so it just may not be practical. And so um, we may want to strike that sentence. Um, I, I think we ought to strike the whole thing, actually. I, I don't feel comfortable with what's written there that we decide who has a conflict of interest. Um, I, th I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't like it. We, we, are, we are making that decision whether we want like it or not, relative, I know, relative to taking on a conflict of interest I, lawsuit. So you're making that determination. The question is, what additional steps do you go through prior to just us making that determination? Yeah. That's all. So, Gina, do you think what is written about doing that is something that you think is a good idea? Because it just seems like it puts <coughs> more burden on us than it should. That it, I, I mean, I get it. The previous board had a lousy attorney. And we don't. So, I, I I don't understand the need for the wording. I don't like it. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't like it. Yeah. So, well, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot here. Well, I, I don't mind being put on the spot on these issues. My concern is that um, to to really get into this would involve a waiver of attorney-client privilege because I'm going to be talking about strategic legal issues that could apply in, a, in a real situations that have and may occur in the future. So if there's a desire to have a full vetting with my participation here in an open session meeting, I would request that the board consider waiving attorney-client privilege for purposes of that discussion. Well, just for the scope of talking about the consequences yes. of this particular yeah. Language. Can can we do that? You can do. The board can choose to do that with a motion to waive a client a client attorney privilege. To waive attorney client privilege for the purposes of having a discussion at this meeting regarding. Um, the legal implications of the proposed language. Okay. 
Anybody want to, can we go ahead and say we want to waive that now? We make a motion. It's a motion. Yes, sir. Can we, can I make a motion that we waive attorney client pro I can't even Privilege. speak. <laughs> Privilege. At this meeting so you can give us an answer. Uh, do, do you mind if I actually make that? <laughs> yes, I would prefer. My, my tongue is sticking to my lips. That's why, because I want to be sure that the scope of it is clear. Okay. Use your language. Yeah, so the motion that I would recommend for this purpose, if you agree to do this, I'm not recommending that you do this, but uh, the motion would be um, to waive attorney client privilege for purposes of having an open session discussion about the legal implications of the proposed language in the board policy manual um, uh, just at tonight's meeting. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, so how about this? I'll make a motion that we follow the legal counsel's recommendation. Okay. And I'll second it. So we put the burden on all yeah. Paul, so the motion has, does not have the element of yes. attorney-client privilege? Right. I didn't hear it. Okay. Holly, you're going to... All right. Um, public, yeah, public, public comment. comment. Yeah, it's a oh, public comment, sorry. Who wants the public? Okay. I support the motion. <laughs> okay. I do too. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, to answer your question, um, the waiver of attorney-client privilege was built into my language, and I believe um, what Director Milan did was simply incorporate that into the motion. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. Rather than try to repeat and, that. And any said. other I don't know, public comment here? Director Falls. Yes. We'll deal with what she said. Hmm? Director Ferris. No. President Henry. Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Aye. Okay. Um, well, um, I guess I'll start with um, the issue of the FPPC determination, and then I'll talk about the provision more generally. Um, the FPPC takes the position that it will not provide an opinion as to a matter that's in litigation. So it isn't even just a question of um, how much time it would take the FPPC to respond if we made a request in this context. It's that they almost certainly would not respond in this context. And even if it's pending litigation. I mean, the litigation hasn't started. We haven't accepted. There's no action on our part yet. Well, typically the way this would arise is that somebody gets sued and okay. then the uh, request for defense and indemnification gets tendered okay. to so, the so district. That, that so the lawsuit the happens thing. first. Okay. Yeah, so <coughs> the FPPC under those circumstances isn't going to provide an opinion to help the district make its decision whether to defend and identify. In fact, I doubt it would ever issue an opinion about a defense and indemnification obligation. The, point to, the place to engage the FPPC is when the conflict arises when there's a concern that there may be a conflict in connection with a transaction that the district is considering undertaking. So on this specific point, if there's a desire to do this, I would suggest something like um, that the board of directors um, consider any written opinion provided by the FPPC regarding the alleged conflict of interest um, or whether, uh, uh, or the reasons why none was obtained, something like that. It, it, again, if we're going to go down this road of um, making it harder to defend and indemnify, I guess I have two uh, overarching concerns about doing something like this. The first is that the reason the government code requires district, well, government entities to defend and indemnify employees and directors, and again, this isn't specific to conflict of interest, this is generally, is to encourage public service. Mm -hmm. 
and to avoid situations where people are afraid of stepping into um, personal liability in connection with actions they may take as a public official. So there's that background principle. But then in addition to that, um, a really unfortunate part of the code sections that provide for the defense and indemnification obligation is that they're really unclear, which means it's always a difficult decision when one of these things gets tendered, you know, whether to provide defense and indemnity or not. Um, if you refuse, because inde defense and indemnity is required under certain circumstances, you put the district at risk of liability for the refusal. So, um, I would tend to suggest a, a process that's more reliant on legal counsel and a rec fully recognizing the irony of that statement. <laughs> um, and the reasons why something like this would be proposed because of what's occurred here in the district. But I think as your counsel, it's incumbent upon me to point out to you before you do something like this, that um, by making it hard to provide defense indemnity when it may be required, you are exposing the district to potential liability, as well as potentially showing your hands in terms of what evidence and knowledge you have of the underlying facts in making these determinations in a public forum when you wouldn't otherwise be required to do so. So that said, this was vetted for me, and I. I, I think you could do it. I don't object to it on legal grounds. I simply think it's important that you be fully informed about the consequences of implementing something like this. Okay. Yeah, this was something that I feel very strongly with, I believe very strongly that we need to seriously consider. Um, <coughs> I think the um, when you start getting into legal situations, there are, there's no winners typically. That's so only you know survivors. I think um, being able to say as or being concerned as a board that we're not just rushing into providing a defense doesn't necessarily mean that a defense won't be provided at some point, um, or there isn't a negotiation about how you get there. Um, and I think um, the time frames that are involved in the, in the responses, which I think are either 20 days or 10 days. 20 or 15, depending on yeah, the Yeah, is, is very short and doesn't really allow you a lot of time to be able to dive into things a little bit more deeply. Um, hence the reason I wanted to make this suggestion. I don't think that it ultimately puts the district, if you look at it in the scope of the entire lawsuit, or the or us as directors in any greater danger of what we're going to have to do, but it does force us, and particularly for conflict of interest, this does not apply to any other situation, to make very specific statements as a board to the community as to why the board is going to put the community on the hook for potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in the defense. Um, I, I just, that at a minimum, we owe that to our, our community. So. <coughs> okay, I totally disagree with you, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. I know. I actually had another thing at the meeting that I talked about. <coughs> it, it, not only clearing up, um, putting items on the board, uh, uh, agenda, it said in two places, um, uh, it's, uh, let's see, 
Bank, we can put, or we can put items, items on, or another place that said an item. And 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 I talked about this at the meeting. I I said I didn't think it should just be items. And I'm willing to compromise, but I think two items is plenty for any board member to put on agendas because there is enough work to be done here without it winding up being a board member's agenda rather than a board agenda. Well, so are we done with the conflict of interest? Stuff well, we stuff? get a vote on it. I, I'm done with it. I said I don't okay. like it. You like it. Okay. I, but I, there may be other people that might want to comment okay. on it. You want to comment? No, I have no comment on that. Okay, how about you, Rick? So as far as what uh, legal counsel said, so how do we best learn from this lesson that we just went through with this uh, Vieira lawsuit? And so I'm hearing, you know, we want to have show that we've learned some lesson here, we don't make the same mistake. So how are we trying to do that? And I, I don't want us to overreach and get in trouble that way, but I, we need to show that we've learned something here and we're trying to put in some measures that prevent us from doing that again. And, you know, your advice there to me was saying that we're in difficult territory here. And I don't know where you can be specific enough to get to changing it so that we put in some roadblocks to prevent us from defending something that we shouldn't defend. Well, um, again, at the risk of kind of suggesting policy, I, I think there are a couple of elements of this that are really um, non-controversial in my mind in terms of how they could help in a situation like this in the future. Um, one is insisting that the FPPC be contacted for a formal determination if um, if the district is considering, you know, proceeding with a transaction where a conflict of interest issue has been um, identified. Of course, that's a little tricky because who identifies it? I mean, we don't want to go to the FPPC just because somebody alleges a conflict that may not be real. But getting to the FPPC when there's a real conflict issue, I think, could be valuable. Um, another is the language, to the maximum extent permitted by law, any decision to approve or grant such a request for defense and implementation and conflict of interest situation shall be made subject to a reservation of rights on the part of the district. That was a clear lessons learned from the past lawsuit. A lot of that could have been avoided if there had been a reservation of rights in connection with the decision to defense and defend and indemnify. But now that doesn't address, that kind of skirts around the issue of do you make it harder than the do you add requirements beyond what's in the law to make it harder for the district to defend and indemnify in what may be an appropriate situation? And um, to me, that's, that's sort of a, a political and a risk calculus. I, I, have, I would have concerns about, as, a, you know, as your legal counsel, about doing anything like that. But uh, I, I can understand the reasons why you may want to go there. And um, this language does that. Something else like it could, could accomplish that. So I think it's really easy to put some things in place that are not making it harder to defend and indemnify. Where it gets a little trickier is if you actually want to make it harder for the board to make a decision to defend and indemnify in an uh, appropriate situation. Yeah. But and, you can do that. And, and just to be clear, it was my intention to make it harder on yeah. conflict of interest, right. specifically on conflict of interest. Not impossible. Not that it couldn't be done, not that it shouldn't be done even under certain circumstances, but to make it so the board has to do some of this in the light of public scrutiny. So, so given that, Bob, could we ask Gina to write something that gets to the spirit of what you're trying to do and stays within what she feels is the best legal advice? I'm always open to hearing As James, have you reviewed this? I did review this. And yes. did you offer I did. these comments at that point in time? I 
offered these comments in an effort to help create language that would work consistent with the intent that was expressed to me to make it harder to defend and indemnify in a conflict okay. situation. So is it, this, this, so I'm not, this, is not, this doesn't flow from my legal recommendation. It is my advice applied to the, in, the intent that was presented. Does it fairly me. represent your advice given the intent that you were trying to satisfy with your advice? <laughs> <laughs> have you uh, you've been to law school? So <laughs> it sounds like we're just like we're in deposition. Um, uh, yes, though I don't think you have to go as far. If you want to accomplish this, you don't have to go as far as the language goes. But the language works to make it harder to defend and identify. Okay, you got some other problem with the document, though, right? Other than, uh, I, other than this? Well, and the uh, so items. If we stand to... one section yeah. at a time here, so yeah. let's finish with this particular conflict of interest okay. thing first. If we can. I've, I've said my piece, so. I've said mine. You have anything to say, Luke? Not being a lawyer. My gut tells me not to have an opinion on this, so I'm going to stay with my gut. We will have an opinion if it ever comes back one way or the other. Uh, does uh, anybody in the audience want to say something according to their gut? Uh, Debbie? <laughs> so a few things. I, I guess this is general public comment for the whole idea of these policy changes. So, going back to restricting access to board members to talking to the attorney, I'm totally opposed to that. You have a really, really big responsibility here, and your responsibility often includes policy decisions and rewriting policy, and to not have full access to the attorney isn't just isn't going to work. It isn't really any different than you conferring with the district manager when you have questions on things. You're using up his time. You're spending district money talking to him then, too. We're not talking about restricting anybody having access to any staff. I think you need to have the access to do your jobs. And as Gina has said, she hasn't been, if, I, if I'm saying that right, you didn't see any, nobody's calling you with inappropriate questions. So it's just business that's being done. So both Rick and Gina have to use their judgment if someone is calling too often with too many questions for you to help them streamline their questions and maybe bring it up in closed session when you have an opportunity. If, if you both feel that too much time is being taken with perhaps one director on one subject, that's just a suggestion. On the FPPC, um, really an interesting site, and I also have some experience. The FPPC was used several times in Monte Carlo, and um, it's a really valuable tool to have, but yes, you gotta get in early. When you even suspect there might be a problem, you go to them, and it's the FPPC likes to see the actual person who is being questioned submit their question. Not the board, not another board member, not a staff member, but the person who, who it may be having the conflict has to take it upon themselves to ask the question. You can go on the site and you can read lots of questions, and just because it's maybe you're not really clear whether it's a, a fault or not, is not a reason to not ask the question because they, they do find pro and con both ways on things that would seem obvious to you, but they, they explain why it's very informative. Um, what else? On this legal question, I think I would, if I were on the board, I would defer to counsel to come up with a language that works best for a workable thing on this conflict of interest law. I kind of agree with Lou on that. <laughs> it's like, this is why we, we employ the counsel. Yes. Anybody else out there, Ed? On the question of uh, board members using the lawyer, the uh, attorney, and, and costing <coughs> the district some money, I believe the attorney comes on at five o'clock. That's when you start charging. You you start your. Are you? Is there a time when you actually start before the... When she's on the clock. On the clock at 5 o'clock. You're talking about 
board meeting attendance? Yes, uh, and uh, yeah. When I when I arrive and start meeting with the district, whether that's pre meetings before the board meeting or the board meeting itself, is when I start charging. It's when I'm doing work for the district. Okay, so there's but, no there's no time when you're. There. What I'm saying is, you should have a specific time that you start, like a half an hour before. The closed session and any board member or any two board members could come and ask questions of you because you're going to be charging the district anyway and they have a free access to you. I believe the president of the board is doing that at this time now and that would, uh, that could, all the members should have the ability to use that service. I'm not the only one who uses it. Uh, I mean, if that's the yeah. It should be the attorney determining that, not... Yeah. Mark, please. Uh, I just have a question, uh, Gina. We, we should have in the process that's already existing that there's an administrative recusal process of someone who's on the board, for example, who has a definite conflict of interest. They should declare, under the state law, they're recusing, recusing themselves, and they should explain why that's also in the state law, and leave the diocese. That's stage one, right? That's step one, so we don't go further down that rabbit hole. I mean, that's that should be clearly defined in the in our, our board. Uh, yes, absolutely. There's a conflict of interest code that's, that spells all that out consistent with state law. The, the threshold question is, uh, there may be cases where it's not clear whether there's a conflict or, or not. And that's when it may be advisable to get the MPPC involved. Right. So that's the next step. Right. <laughs> get, the MPPC, get their letter early on, and then the board can react from there. Before we even get close to litigation, we want to put as many steps ahead of us before that ever occurs and waste more money. Right. And I agree. I think a council board members should call our attorney. Uh, if there's an administrative question or something, that's part of the, the duty of being the board council, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm sorry. I'm not free to say what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, I'm just making my comment as a public. Virgil has a question. Oh, Virgil? Uh, yes, I'm uh, Virgil Champlin. Uh, for, yeah. um, I have a couple of questions. Um, um, is the attorney free to um, say that a question that was she was approached by um, is inappropriate? Is, is she free to say that? Somebody calls her up and says, I want some information about this and this and this and this. And she said, well, maybe that's not appropriate. Is she, does she have the freedom to say things like that? I don't know. Let me, I, I think maybe I can sort of hone in on the issue here a little more than we have, um, which is, uh, yeah, there, I mean, there are, there are limits as to what kind of situations where I can provide legal advice to people connected to the district. It has to pertain to district business. That's a clear legal, I can't provide personal legal advice to someone to people connected to the district. So it's always about district business. Um, I think the concern really boils down to um, when should legal time, which involves a cost to the district, be reserved for things that the whole, for, for which the board or the district, whoever's in charge of the issue of the district has provided direction, as opposed to when somebody who is interested in exploring something that isn't sort of squarely in front of the board can, I mean, I think, and maybe you have different concerns, but my understanding of the key issue is, you know, when can people kind of vet their district-related concerns through me, even though it's not sort of at board direction or district manager direction or, or something. Um, and I think that's a valid concern, and it's a difficult one to manage, but that's where I would propose that we could try to craft something that would address it. Um, my point is that I, I think it's often inappropriate for a third party to interfere between a conversation between one of the board members and uh, the attorney if it is if it is district policy, and that the the attorney should be in a position that she is comfortable saying 
this is probably something that should be discussed in a different forum, or yes, I can go ahead and discuss this with you. And um, we have to depend on the attorneys to, to, actually, to actually guide that. Because I, you know, I would have no way of knowing that the attorney, what the, the attorney was discussing with somebody else, or at least I would hope I have no way of knowing. Thank you. Sure. On C, um, B, and this, you know, there's the, the board shall, make, shall consider to make the following findings. Um, there's no evidence currently known to the district that the director acted or failed to act because of actual fraud or corruption or actual malice. Why is not the actual filing of a lawsuit not itself evidence, or is it? And how would a director make a follow a finding and be able to vote that there was no evidence if there was a lawsuit filed? Because that seems to be some some person who has found evidence um, that it needs to go to a legal resolution. Uh, I, I feel like I'm taking up a lot of time. I can respond to that, though. I guess I will. I can respond to everything tonight. So, uh, <laughs> uh, that's actually a really good, sort of interesting legal question. Typically, a lawsuit involves allegations and not evidence. We don't assume anything in a lawsuit is, is an actual fact, unless it's verified. And then you're absolutely right. If it's a verified complaint, it could constitute evidence of the fraud or corruption or malice alleged. So, that's a valid point. All righty, any other public? Like, we're running out of time here. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, board, anybody want to make a motion or what do you want to do here? Well, if there is some concern, and I think Rick has expressed that this might be too broad, then maybe we hold it over. Work in some language. Right. So my suggestion would be that Gina, you have an understanding of our commitment and care about um, a what happened in the Vieira case. Can you craft some language that deals with that? Um, I, in order to do that, I would like to have a motion and a vote by the board. Um, with the intent that I, we kind of went back and forth on, which is an intent to make it harder than the law requires to provide defense and indemnity in a conflict of interest situation. And the reason for that is because um, I can't do that without making these situations even more risky for the district than they already are, but I can right. do it if that's the, the policy direction the board's giving me, but I'd like to get it from the board as a whole. Well, I don't want to make it any riskier for the the board here. So that's this fine line that we're <laughs> dancing around here. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm understanding you as being very cautious here. I think that the best way to minimize your risk in this situation is to get to the FPPC as soon as possible if one of these situations arises, and two, ensure that if you're going to defend and indemnify, you do it pursuant to a reservation of rights. Does that, work? Does, does that work with you, Bob? Well, I mean, again, it, it doesn't, from the point of view of it doesn't make it harder and more public as to why we're doing it, because that effectively would basically be the same process with, uh, um, with, a, with a process change, which would have been significant, no question, but it's basically a process change. So effectively, you can have the same outcome as, as we had before. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm one guy, I mean, you know, it's, it's my belief we need to, I mean, there's a word for doing the same thing over again, expecting different results, and I, I just, it doesn't feel like it's enough. That, that's all. So no matter what the language is in this thing, I think we've all learned a lesson that happened in that case, and we can apply our own uh, questioning and process to that that you know tries to avoid it. You know we've learned a lesson. 
we don't necessarily have to have um, this legal <coughs> language that tells us to ask some more deeper questions to prevent this from happening. All right? Let That's what I'm trying to say here. Let me ask we have our own responsibility. Is in a conflict of interest situation under, let's say, all this was out except for the FPPC and the reservation rights, which are both, I think, valuable things to do. Would the board be able to make a statement in public in open session about why they're choosing to defend something other than we simply choose to defend this lawsuit? The board can always make that statement depending on the night. Depending on the facts and circumstances, council may advise against that in closed session, but the board can absolutely choose, after consulting with council, hopefully, uh, to make any statement it wants about why it's making this decision. I mean, I, I, would, I would vote for this as it stands, but um, because I don't think the risks, I mean, there's a spectrum of risk, right? And when you're dealing with these situations, risk is never zero. And the question is, does this language move us from, you know, 20% to 23, or does it move you from 20% to 50%, right? And, you know, attorneys are going to always want to make it as small as possible. There's no question about that. But then it becomes a business political decision. So if the consensus of the board is, let's remove it except for, um, you would have to rework the FPPC language, because that's not in a good enough state right now. <coughs> and then, of course, the language in D is already there. But if the consensus of the board is you want to remove everything else but that, um, okay. and obviously I'll accept it, because I'm just one vote, but I, 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 it's not enough in the So I would, I would. Uh, you, by the way, you had another item you wanted to talk about the number of agenda items. I think you had suggested two. Right, instead of uh, items. Yeah, and so my my response to that is um, there, there's already language in there that allows the president, in conjunction with the district manager, to schedule items. The the concern I have is basically limits provide control, and for people who may be dissenting voices. That's not a good place to be. Um, so there's already the ability for the president to say, well, we're too busy this meeting. We need to delay it for a meeting or two to address. But the obligation is that it has to be addressed. If you put limits on it, then it may not get addressed. Well, I'm not trying to put limits on have putting up of having items on the agenda, but I, other than I think two, an agenda is plenty. Um, and okay, we're going to have one meeting in November, one meeting in December. <coughs> we had a previous board member who wanted to put a lot of things on the agenda. We were able to talk him around, so that didn't happen. It, it's to me, it's kind of an issue. Um, I'm not against board members putting something on the agenda. But let's face it, I, I know it hasn't happened, but you could want something on, and Lou could want something on, and Steve, and, and Rick. And, and then there's all the district business. I mean, OK, that's just one item, all of you. But if you can put three on, and Lou can put on two, and Steve, if he wanted to put on five, you know, he's really talkative. Um, so well, those are all, I, it, it's, it's. Those are all speculation. It hasn't happened. Yeah, as I know it's speculation. It hasn't happened, but it could have happened because we did have a board member who wanted to do stuff like that. Well, I and I just because you don't know about it, doesn't mean it didn't happen. Well, no, I mean, I get that that possibility exists, but the president has the authority to schedule things. And I so understand schedule, that. If the schedule gets moved to January because November, December fall, then it gets yeah, moved to and, January. And, so. Okay. Whatever. So We just have a different opinion here. I, I, absolutely. No, no question about it. Yeah. I mean, I would move to adopt... Um, 
Do we have a, we have a resolution? Yes, or do we not? Um, there is a resolution. I think it needs a minor tweak, but there is a resolution that if approved, we we'll adopt these changes. Well, actually, since we have to make another change, let's hold it over. I, let, let's hold it over for another meeting because you need to get the FPPC change in. Yeah, and as, so as I understand it, I'm going to include language about going to the FPPC in the reservation of rights. I'm still not clear whether I'm, um, do I just leave in the language? I, I, I think at this point it's going to be up to the rest of the board. I mean, I'm okay with it as is, but I'm hearing that there may be concerns from the rest of the board. And if there is, then that would make a change. Did this, didn't this come from the administrative committee? Um, it, it did, but... Well, it, we sent it to them to go make the changes and then come back well, to us. Yeah, it's like we're doing the administrative yeah, committee's but, job for them. Yeah. To be fair, um, Gina was not present. And so the discussion around these specific legal aspects, the waiver of uh, attorney-client privilege around all that, couldn't take place in that in that regard. Everything else was reviewed by the committee and they were okay with that. Um, but this specific thing was was done without Gina's involvement. And, and send, send it back and let them let, let Gina get involved and, and finish it off right and send it back. Yeah? I mean that, I mean we have wasted a whole bunch of time. Yeah. Happy, 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 happy to do that. Happy to well do. I don't mean to waste your time but so do you have enough direction, Jan? We'll uh, take this back and let you rewrite this paragraph and then we'll bring it back to the board? Um, I'd, I'd like I, to get, if, I, if it's coming back to the admin committee, which is what I heard, I need more direction from the board as well, to whether I, or not. It's going back to the admin committee then first and then back. Well, well that's there's, there's what. No, there's no reason to go to the admin said. committee around that particular one because yeah. that's around legal. So I, 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 I would not. I would not agree with let, that. Let it just go directly to Gina and then come back. Yeah, I, you're yeah. saying the admin doesn't need it? Fine. Yeah. Okay. I, I, no sense wasting anybody else's time. Okay. What, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of the FPPC language. I'm going to take care of the issue that was raised um, by the public mm -hmm. that I think is a valid one. Um, but I'm going to leave in the language that you had proposed so that that can be the focus of the okay. discussion. All right. That sounds good. If that's acceptable to everyone. It's, it's, it's acceptable to me, yes. Sure. Okay. So, okay, we're going on to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, an application for the uh, Correct. engineering. Uh, the, uh, the, board, the district board policy um, manual provides for five standing committees and the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency Directors. Uh, we have the Admin, the Budget and Finance, Engineering, Environmental, uh, the Lompico Oversight, and the Santa Margarita Groundwater uh, that, uh, that the Directors are appointed to, and uh, public members. Uh, at the June 20, 2019 Board of Directors meeting, the Board directed staff to extend the time for applications to the Engineering and Lompico Assessment District Oversight Committee, LADOC, until the positions are filled. We received one application for the Engineering Committee. It should be in your packet on September 19, 2019. And I'll turn it back over to the board. Okay. Um, and I do believe the applicant. Gail, uh, do, you, do you want to get up and say anything? Sure. Or? This one is easier than everything else. <laughs> um, <laughs> A couple of meetings ago, um, after my unsuccessful application to be appointed to an open seat on the board, uh, Director Foles was kind enough to come up to me afterwards and suggest that I increase my involvement with uh, the district by applying for the uh, position uh, for the public on the engineering committee. So I did. Okay. Thank you. So um, I believe we should accept that application. And and the board, yes, Bob. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, accept, uh, appoint, sorry, um, Gail Mahood to the engineering committee and set the engineering committee uh, membership at five. Um, it is a flexible membership that we get to um, 
decide uh, as we make the appointment. It's not fixed at, at, at time. Okay. Okay. As the chairman of the engineering committee, it is my pleasure to second that motion uh, and recommend that uh, that she be appointed to the engineering committee. Okay. All righty. So. Uh, I'm going to say one thing. So one, I think we um, had put that the committee memberships were uh, subject to renewal in December. Right. Right. So that's it's a very short window. And I know we had some um, concerns about having people uh, be on the committee for more than one term or year. Uh, I would just want to make sure that she could be on this committee, you know, she's only going to be on it for two months, basically, is that she should be able to be on the committee for a full term uh, next it, year. Well, she, right. She can, uh, if she wants to apply. It, it can yeah. be, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> somebody can be on the same committee one year after another. Yeah, they, it, they aren't limited to just one year. Yeah, the policy doesn't restrict their ability to reapply. Yeah. It does restrict their ability to serve in more than one committee yeah. to try yeah. to get more yeah. people involved in the process. Is that in our board policy manual? It, it is, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I think. Yeah. 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 Then I agree with the motion. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah. I would like to point out, though, that the memo on the possible public member committee appointment does have a, an error in it. It says, consider the appointment of Virginia Mood. And not Gail Mahood. May I ask how you pronounce your name? Mayhood. I thought it was Mayhood. Okay. Yeah, my first name is Gail. Not yeah, not Virginia. <laughs> so I, didn't my motion say Gail? I yeah, you, no, you said It did. I'm just saying that you the memo you're recommending. <laughs> so I think I butchered your last you, name. So you said, said Gail, I think. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know that we need to change that, but I just want to acknowledge that there, was an, there is an error there in the, the recommended. Action by the board. No, it says G. No, it says Virginia Mahood, is what it says on page two. It is recommended that the board review the attached application and consider the appointment of Virginia uh, Mahood oh, to oh, the engineering okay. committee. From the, oh, from the, the memo. Yeah, from the, the item is, says G. The yes. item A. Yes. On new business. Oh, I'm not looking at the agenda itself, I'm looking at the memo. Yeah, I'm from district manager for the yeah. possible public member appointment, committee appointment. He just stuttered, that's all. Okay, so we have a um, motion and a second. <coughs> public comment? Any public comment? Public comment. Oh, any public comment on this? This makes me very happy. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Uh, Chuck. I think it probably makes every member of the public here happy. Your okay. Appointment. Okay, can you go ahead now? Yeah. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. President Henry? Aye. Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Aye. Okay, so um, Mr. Rogers, item B. Yes, uh, this is item is discussion of possible award for a contract for the Vera Creek Estates Wastewater Alternative Analysis Project on August 1st. Uh, the, the district advertised a request for proposal for consulting services for the Bear Creek Estates Wastewater Alternative Analysis. On August 30th, the district uh, received three proposals. The fees from the three firms ranged from $38,050 to $39,100, very close. Uh, the proposals were from the following firms, Waterworks Engineering, Prolist and Pritchard Consulting Group, IEC. Uh, on October 2nd, uh, two board members assigned to the engineering committee. Uh, the district manager and district engineer met with property owners uh, at the Fair Creek Estates, at Fair Creek Estates to discuss proposals and answer questions. On October 3rd, the engineering committee met to review the proposals and to discuss input received from the property owners the night before. The proposals uh, were evaluated using the criteria set in the uh, request for proposals. All of the proposals were high quality and well presented. After a lengthy discussion, the engineering committee made the finding that Waterworks Engineering was the top ranked firm. 
for the Fair Creek Estates Wastewater Alternative Analysis Project. We recommend the board award contract to uh, for the Fair Creek Estates Wastewater Analysis Project to Waterworks Engineers in the amount of thirty-eight thousand five hundred and ninety-eight. Additional information uh, when we met with the, with the homeowners uh, out of Fair Creek Estates, they also agreed and recommended uh, Waterworks. Uh, after a lengthy discussion with the homeowners, uh, we had uh, I think about half a dozen homeowners that met with, uh, with staff and, and, and directors. This is the second time that we bid this. The first time we went out to bid, we only got one bid, uh, that was IEC. Uh, and the folks from Bear Creek and the engineering committee thought that oh, maybe we could do better and get additional bids and authorize the, the rebidding. Uh, with the rebidding, uh, our district engineer, our new, we, uh, we had the new district engineer uh, on staff who actually went out and solicited a multiple engineering firms. So that paid off with three firms. Um, and uh, we're recommending that you select uh, Waterworks uh, Engineering. Engineers in the amount of 38598 And authorize the district manager to execute a contract. <coughs> I don't know, maybe uh, the chair from the engineering committee may want to add, I don't know. But it, was, it, was a good, it was a good procedure and process working directly with the users, you know, and as you all know, uh, Bear Creek States is its own enterprise district and those few homeowners will be paying for this out of their rate structure. And it is budgeted, and we are just under budget for this analysis. I would just add that uh, one of the the things that added to to my confidence in uh, supporting Waterworks Engineering is one of their staff engineers was there at the meeting. They were not invited. She just you know, took it upon herself. She saw that we we're having a meeting, and she drove all the way down from San Francisco, I believe it was, to to attend the meeting, and at, and was willing to answer questions, and that was impressive. Yeah, as well as her, the quality of her answers. And she also said that and they were the only firm that actually modeled the existing system yes. and said, hey, this existing system you have. There's no way you can get it to it's work. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Something we she, know. she did her homework, so, yeah. did her work, mm -hmm. and, and followed through and, and gave a, a good presentation. It made it, the job easy for the engineering committee to yes. recommend yeah. waterworks. I, and I think we've been hearing that what we've been doing isn't going to work. <clears throat> yeah, it hasn't worked. It hasn't, it hasn't worked and will, will, will not work. Was that offered by Hunter Biden this couple? These four people need relief quickly. Yeah, they do. So, uh, you're on the committee there, yes. Rick, and um, do you have any comments? Uh, yes. Uh, firstly, the homeowners were there. They participated in it. They asked questions. They made statements. Uh, about their concerns. Um, and then again, we met uh, the engineering committee the next day, and some members again uh, came and made sure that they were clear about uh, their preferences. And so the public part of this process was really good. Um, and the overall proposal, I think, you know, we've all been concerned about this ongoing problem, and the Waterworks people are the people that are going to get to the answer to this. Do they have any idea about how long it would take? Um, there was a, a timeline that we put in the RFP, but because we, we missed a, a deadline, it was going to be a little longer than, uh, but I do believe it that was at the end of the year. Yeah. But I, it may be into the first of the year. But they're, ready to, they're ready to take off on it. It's just right. that things slow down. With the process, okay. a little bit. And the but, year would be great. Yeah, we're we're very close to that. Okay. And again, this is only to yep. determine what we can do to make repairs. It's not. Oh, like you mean it's not the construction? It is not the system. No, Come on, Rick. No. Thirty-eight thousand so is going to be great. No, I just want to make sure <laughs> she is, is aware. Steve, I'm sure the residents are thinking to be aware. Oh, okay. How about public? Anything on Bear Creek Estate? So we need um, a motion. 
Uh, sure. I uh, recommend, I'm sorry, I move that uh, we award the consulting contract for Bear Creek Estates Wastewater Alternative Analysis Project to Waterworks Engineers in the amount of 38598 And authorize the district manager to execute agreement. And what he said. <laughs> I'll second that. Director Falls? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Aye. Okay. Moving on. Item C, public outreach. Yes, uh, Director Foltz uh, has inquired if the district has ever participated in the Boulder Creek uh, Halloween candy giveaway. Um, for many years, the district has participated uh, um, in the uh, candy giveaway, has utilized um, uh, management volunteers to pass out candy at the district office in Boulder Creek. The last couple of years, uh, staffing has changed and we have not had volunteers and have not passed out uh, Candy uh, in Boulder Creek. Um, if the district would like to go back and pass out candy, and we do not have any volunteers, I don't believe this year, you could authorize uh, and open it up to uh, classified staff. You have to pay overtime, or you could do other means of a candy giveaway. It's been, it's been suggested if no uh, volunteer employees are available, that board of directors could participate in the candy giveaway. I, I believe that if a board member did want to do it, that they could participate, but we should have a staff member because the, the office will be unlocked and open to, to give out candy. It's also been uh, suggested that maybe we reach out to maybe the Fountain and other parts of the district um, we've had some experience with that in the past that's kind of uh, expanded uh, and we've been then asked once we move into those towns to participate in, in other costs such as business associations and, and pay dues. Uh, currently we do pay dues at the Boulder Creek Business Association and it was decided by boards in the previous, in the past, that we would contribute uh, in the Boulder Creek as this was, was where the district headquarters is located. Um, the district is not uh, a member of any other local memberships, um, and there would be some increased cost. We estimate the cost of candy is purely an estimation, it would be $150 per location, 10 bags per location. That's strictly just an off the, off the cuff estimate. So staff is looking for direction, and maybe the scene instructor Foltz has asked for this item, maybe he would like to add. To the items? Yeah, just a few things. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't necessarily think that uh, we need to ask for volunteers, uh, volunteers I, you know, because people are busy on their own yeah, family. Kids things. and different things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I do think this is something, I do think this is a great outreach uh, opportunity. And given that the district is no longer just Boulder Creek focused, I think outreach into other areas of the district is very, very important. I mean, we serve a lot of places, and certainly Felton, I think, holds a similar kind of candy giveaway. Um, I wasn't anticipating actually having to open the building up. I thought we'd, if it was just board members, we'd bring out a table and you know, have a, have a um, you know, bowl there that we could be using hand out. Similar to what I did last year during the, during the campaign, didn't it didn't require any building participation at all. Gotcha. And I would very much like to see if there was a way to um, participate in Felton. I I checked with the San Lorenzo Valley website for their the chamber for their dues. I think we'd be at three hundred dollars a year. I didn't wasn't able to get in touch with Felton. Um, I'm assuming it's a few hundred dollars a year as well. And I think that kind of outreach is well worth it. Yeah, we've been asked in the past for, for chamber and business associations and the board has thought it would keep, at least past boards, we thought it would just keep escalating to, to other civic organizations and so forth and just try to, try to limit it to Boulder Creek, but well, totally which, up to the board. Yeah, which civic organizations would we be worried about? 
other than the chamber. We will felt... knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can like say. But I mean, that's, I mean yeah. that, that be, becomes up to us. I mean, the fact of the matter is, we do do business in these areas. We are a active member of the business community in the sense that we I'm sure they supply a lot of us. water. And I, I think I think it is a uh, huge opportunity for us to increase our outreach and engagement with the community at large to, to do this. So um, I think you might need more than 10 bags though, you know, you don't just allow people to grab handfuls, you know, it's kind of the kids come by and you just put it in the bag and I, I think I went through 12 or 13 last year in Boulder Creek, something like that. Oh, well, have the munchies, I guess. Yeah, I, guess, I, guess so. I, I do know that there's two board members who are going to be out of town on Halloween. Oh, okay. So that kind of limits the number of board members. Well, Lois, I thought it was the newest committee member had to be <laughs> part of the Halloween committee. <laughs> no, we, we don't. I mean, if someone wants to volunteer, that's great. But I mean, you can easily run these with, with one person. It's not... Um, I it's, think it'd be important. Not. I mean, when we did it in the past, obviously we, and Stephanie can chime in here, we did it in, right inside the front door. And you know, you have the face of the district, people know it's the water district. Yeah. I'm not sure if you set up a table somewhere. <clears throat> People would know well, no, the water you, district. you set a table up in front of the right, in front of the in front of the, yeah. You, you don't we don't want to go into the into the well, building. There's no need to do the that. The sidewalk gets so crowded. I, I was just going to say I don't know if the business association wants the sidewalk block. How about well, this then, side? Then just put it on yeah, one side. Yeah, it could be on side. this side. How's that bench of theirs coming along? Yeah. We'll just put a <laughs> box of candy on your bench. Yeah, but I, I, I really don't want to have to open up doors. Well, and no, I, and, and we was, well, that's kind of one of the concerns. Yeah, yeah. people sleeping on the bench. I mean, when, exactly. well, you know, the other thing is staff has families. This isn't some meant to be a staff office, thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it is meant for outreach, yeah, and that's right. where I think yeah. board members yeah. get to participate in that. Yeah, it's it's up, up to you so all. I definitely volunteer. To, I've got tables, and I've got the big bowl. I, it's all set up from last year, so I'm ready to go. But I can't be in two places. Does so. council have any issues with board members giving out candy? <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> just checking. If we were doing yeah, it outside of really the candy, I think so. As long as it's not political. Yeah, this is well, meant yeah, to be pure sure. fun. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else has done it, but it is, oh, really? it is an absolute yeah, hoot to see the costumes and the mm -hmm. kids, and it's, it's just great. Well, I volunteered because I volunteer for everything, but I already volunteered to be with my grandchildren in uh, Henderson, Nevada. So, uh, pre-existing <laughs> pre commitment. What is that? So, uh, so you're gone? Uh, I'm going to be in Europe, I'm sorry. Oh, good for you. You're gone? Yeah. You're gone. So, Steve, it's you and I, and maybe that determines. <laughs> sure, I can give out candy. Yeah. Pass out my dentist's card while I'm at There are committee members willing to volunteer, I think. I would love to volunteer. It's so much fun. It is fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, but if, I don't know how you would do it in Felton if you wanted to have it at table. Well, we would have to figure out where they would want us. And yeah. this I'm would also sure. include. Could you just give the bags to the Valley Women's Club and let them do it? Yeah. <laughs> but this would also include signing up, I think, for their. Um, I'd like to. I mean, if they need us to sign up, I'm happy to do that. Well, I just. I would think once we move into the towns, then they'll start asking. That's what happened before. Yeah. I just wanted to, I feel it's my job to try to inform you all of past experiences. And yeah. Okay. The, the give out is between 5 and 5.15, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I think he's that. what he's saying is he isn't speech. available either. Well, I'm available. For pick up your 15 minute window, I'm there. Oh. Well, it's, I think it's about, uh, the Boulder oh. Creek one I think runs two hours, I think. Sure. Yeah. Well, are, are you crowded. even home from work? Yeah, because it starts it starts at daylight, so it's not dark when the kids are out. So I think it starts around four. Yeah. I can I can explain. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I can yeah. for that. For so we'll anything for the children. Do for the kids. Right? You're a sweetie pie. So we would need a formal motion on this. Mm -hmm. No, it's a small expense, but you know, if you want to set a well, no, you just want to set, you know, not to exceed limit, no. and I guess we'll pick up candy. I mean, uh, we'll have to figure that out. 
Yeah. We have a well, what about bags. having I it? I can, I, can, we can, I can go to either myself or my wife and go to Costco and pick up a bunch of so, Not a problem. Are you concerned about cost? I just want to let you know there's potential cost, and you, you may open the door to join other civic groups that, and which is fine. I just wanted to, to let you know that, and it sounds like you, the board may be interested in participating in the other association, association. Okay. or the chamber of commerce yeah. or both. Costume. So, so do you have like banners or something that, that you can well, yeah, do in Felton? Do you have to be a costume yeah. box? No, that, that would be a, a separate. That would be a separate issue. I'm just saying that that could happen when you expand out. I mean, there's no that, way that's asking you have to join. Yeah. Um, and you may get when their dues come up, and then I'll bring that to the board like we did in the past when the business associations first did, and then the board can vote on it. Yeah. Okay. But personally, I think it's a great thing to do, but you know, that's up to the board. Yeah. Okay. So is there not to exceed limit on the cost of candy? Okay. Um, <laughs> that cost ten bucks? Use your discretion. Two bucks. Right. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, size of the it's like cost like the bag is like fifteen bucks. Yeah, and so it's like. Uh, and it's not like you want to do two areas. Two areas. Two areas. In Boulder Creek. Yep. Not to exceed five hundred. So to exceed five hundred. That's kind of my. Steve's thought. gonna do Felton. Felton. And so like, why is why is Ben Gale and Gale and we had someone. We're gonna do Felton. Yeah. Elaine, Elaine, I, I think we need, to have, we need to have at least one board oh, member. Oh, I, I mean, wants uh, Elaine yeah. wants to help. So, so yeah. but it's okay. I mean, I think we need to have one board member at each location. So, yeah. if you want to take Felton, I take Boulder Creek, and we can. Well, we'll take Ben Lomond. Yeah. We have great payers there, too, I think, right? I think Ben Lomond does. Yeah, but they don't ben have a. Do, do they, we, we don't have a treatment facility. That's on a home one. Yeah, we're going to do Felton. Let's not make it more complicated. Well, than it is. Okay, okay, we okay. still have fire management. Let's uh, move on here. Uh, what? We'll be in touch. No further comment. I I'm not trying to stop public comment. I'm trying to stop them. <laughs> is there public comment now? Yeah. Yes, I would like to amend this decision that both board members have to be in costume. <laughs> and pictures taken and posted on the website or Facebook. Yes, this is outreach. It's a great That's idea. Outreach. That's yes. a fabulous idea. I wish you had something. Yeah. Uh, once again, I'll tell you, SDRMA has warned at uh, the risk management conferences that warned taking pictures and posting pictures of board members of the election. I, I, I'm, not, I'm just going to give you that two they'll cents. They'll be in disguise. <laughs> well, I'm going to go as a, you know, board member. <laughs> scary. Which is scary. Okay, a anybody else here with a comment? Well, I actually hadn't finished. I, what My main point was I wanted to thank the board members for volunteering and the committee members for volunteering. And okay. It's a great effort. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. So we put no limit on the candy. Do we have to vote on that, too? I didn't. Limited to three hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Going once. Really? Limit. A limit maximum. We're not going to spend that. Well, I don't think we will. I haven't bought candy. Okay. Stephanie obviously has. <laughs> 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 she knows what it is. Uh, all of a sudden, we're, we're all concerned about money. We're going to spend five hundred dollars on rotting people's teeth. Okay. Okay, we have, I'll make a motion that we spend no more than $500 on the candy. I'll second that motion. Okay. Director Falls? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. President Henry? Yes. Director Spahn? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hello. Finally, Larry Ford. <laughs> you might get to talk. Uh, Rick, uh, you want to well, I'll, introduce? I'll start out the... here and, and uh, I'll apologize first off that this uh, the memo, a short, quick memo, came late to the packet. Um, we did cancel the uh, um, 
Environmental Committee due to uh, agenda posting, uh, we missed the agenda posting deadline and we should have had this um, item in the packet when it went out, but um, we didn't quite get there. But the, uh, the Environmental Committee um, and uh, Dr. Larry Ford and uh, Director Ferris and myself have been <coughs> working and discussing moving ahead with a fire management plan for the district, a district-wide our management plan. We've held several meetings, the three of us, and discussed uh, various methods of moving forward. We discussed the district's existing uh, watershed management plan, uh, Chapter 5 fire management, uh, talked about the data gaps. Um, we have went through a lot of discussion. Um, Dr. Ford has provided a lot of very valuable information. Um, it's been out talking to experts in the field, he was an expert in the field himself, and we have come uh, back and, and presented uh, what we thought we should move ahead to the Environmental Committee, and um, we're asking the board tonight to, to move ahead and to direct to prepare a request for qualifications for a consultant to write a fire management plan for the district. Uh, like I said, uh, we've worked uh, uh, meeting discussed fire management strategy over the last few months, and all three of us agreed that the district uh, has advanced its planning and preparation for the current fire season. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. It's been determined that there still needs some assessment, uh, address data gaps, uh, and a fire management plan uh, is needed. On Wednesday, October 16th, the Environmental Committee met and discussed fire prevention planning strategy. Uh, put together by uh, the three of us. Uh, the committee agreed that the plan should include the before, during, and after planning as well as collaboration with multiple agencies throughout the valley and surrounding areas. Uh, the Environmental Committee voted to recommend to the board um, of moving forward with a, a consultant uh, to assist in, in writing a fire management plan. Our first step would be to put together a, a request for qualifications um, of that person or persons and go from there. Um, we're looking uh, at probably a, a two-phase approach to protect the district assets, uh, identify dedicated equipment to use for firefighting, determine short-term goals for current fire season, update procedures as required, and we will solicit the uh, RFQ. Um, we don't have a, as part of the RFQ, we will get some uh, uh, pricing um, some, some cost analysis um, to uh, move forward and develop this plan. And with that, I'll turn it over to, to, to uh, Director Ferris and uh, Dr. Ford. And they probably would like to add to the discussion. I think the only thing I would like to add, I think you did a good job, Rick, of describing the, the two-phase approach, phase one short-term, phase two long-term. Um, the only thing I, I think it's worth adding is under the long term, we, we really got our creative juices flowing about what we call the big picture from site specifics to fire types and everything in between. We were talking about things like putting fire hydrants on wildlife, on wild land, our own land, you know, where there might be a critical area that, that needs to be defensible and you, know, would, you couldn't fight the fire without bringing water in. Um, where existing water mains already are. Where exactly yeah. right, where existing yeah. water mains already are, so it would be a fairly inexpensive addition to just bring the, the pipe above ground and, and create a, a fire hydrant. As well as taking some of our dirt roads into our own lands and expanding them into fire breaks. I mean, it, it just there's a lot of things we could do that, I mean, prescribed burns, you know, on our own land. There's a, a lot of things that we could do, including using what already exists from the Santa Cruz County CWPP. Um, there, there's just, there's no end of what we can do. So we're starting out um, small with this request for um, for a consultant. And Rick's already got a draft made, uh, 16 point uh, items, 16 items that we're going to expect the consultant to help us with. And then we go into phase two, which is beyond this fire season and into the future. Larry, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, I think you've done a good job uh, describing it. I, I think the very first step should be assessing what's already been done throughout the valley because there are a lot of uh, 
interdependencies, interactions that are both in place and also possible. And so um, I think we were talking about the very first phase being one of um, interacting with these other agencies, um, trying to find out what is possible, um, working with uh, it's Tim Carson, I think, the, mm -hmm. the grant writer, to um, see you know, what funding sources there are on the short term to, to join some of the planning efforts that are already in place. And so it's, um, I think it's a little premature to talk about doing prescribed burns, but I, I think the, uh, there are those kinds of things going on, but I don't think the water district is going to do it. I think it's going to be in cooperation with other programs that are already funded through uh, CAL FIRE and um, some of the other agencies. There are, what, a, a dozen or 15 agencies involved in the valley that we've identified, and some that are sort of peripheral, but that might make really good partners, like Mid-Pen, Mid-Peninsula Regional Open Space History. And so um, I think the, the first step is on, on a fairly urgent basis, you know, trying to figure out how the water district could fit into what's already going on. And help it move so it might, it might be two separate consultants. So one, one might be more, the first one might be more like a facilitator. Mm -hmm. And then this, the second one probably should be a registered professional forester that um, does fire management planning. But still, um, most of the work is going to be interacting with these other agencies. Right. Well, one of the things I left out that with the Northern California fires and the intensity of fires and all the planning, California has made a considerable amount of grant money available. There's a lot of money out there now. And as part of this proposal will be to recommend that we can fund a lot of this with grants and try to find some of these grants. And I'm receiving a lot of information almost daily now since we've tied into these different networks, uh, fire management. California has made a lot of money available. They're just throwing money at it right now. So if we wait and don't move ahead, we the money will dry up. We need yeah. to, I don't want to say strike when the iron's hot, but <laughs> uh, we need to move ahead while this is a, 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 a big topic and the money's out there. Uh, and hopefully we can, uh, part of this proposal will apply for grant funding. And one more point I'd like to add, um, because it would be a good question if somebody were to ask it from the public, is why are we managing this process through the in environmental committee, or outside of the environmental committee, basically the ad hoc group of Rick and I and Larry, well, it was because of the, the urgency of getting something going right away. That is not our intention long term. This is only until the new environmental uh, person is hired, and then it will turn back over to, the, to that person in the environmental committee. And we're... The request for qualifications, we would get back cost analysis, and we would not be spending money until we brought it back to the board for review. Um, so would you be going out for a separate RFP then? After I would think so, yes, after we get somebody qualified to help us write the RFP. But we would then spend money on that person. Right, to that you would. Right. That the first proposal would be qualifications to select a facilitator or a person that could, you know, direct the district in proper moves to move first, and then that that would cost money, and then we would go out again, and then you would start developing a, a, a full-on fire management plan for the district. And we we're estimating that it would probably be in the order of not to exceed twenty-five thousand for that first phase. for that first phase. Yes. You know, but again, we'll, we we have a we good know. indication that we'll be able to recover most, if not all, of those expenses through grant money. We would hope, hope so. And other than when the rain starts, what generally means the end of the fire season, official end in the state of California. I think when the rain starts, I mean, I, yeah, I mean uh, obviously we're right in. In it now, I'm not quite sure what the, <laughs> they actually have a date. Because the weather starts cooling down. Yeah. Pardon me? I can answer that. Yeah. Uh, officially, there is no end to the fire season okay. in okay. California, and um, we're right now in the in the peak. We're right now in the highest danger 
Um, yeah. We've just been really lucky that we haven't had fire so far. Every time I drive by Zanny Fire District, it says fire danger high. Yeah, yeah. And we will be looking to, to fill uh, data gaps in our watershed management plan and in our fire management plan. And it's kind of interesting, I heard it came up a lot, this is the plan, the, the original the foundation here that Dr. Herbert wrote, and she was on environmental plan. Not to take Lois' thunder, but I'd be interested to hear what the public has to say about uh, our prevention planning, or what now, we're now are, calling. Are, is the board done talking about this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Steve? Yep. Okay. All right, Elaine. I am just very reassured that the district is working on this, and I think uh, these three guys have done a great job so far, and I'm, I'm glad for their proposal, and I support it. Any other public? Debbie? Yeah, I like the idea of working with Tim Carson. He's a really good resource for grant research, and he, he knows his business. He's professional. Um, and I think I also read in the minutes of the Environmental Committee that you're consulting or you have worked with Rich Cassell, USDA. Well, we try. We try. It's tough to get a hold of right now. Yeah. He's an incredibly deep resource, too. He has ties to everything. He has helped us out tremendously on several projects, and he knows who to go to for the getting answers too. So he's really, really well connected if you can get hold of him. A great resource. And we have a pretty good list of local professionals like Rich um, right. that have been contacted through uh, through Dr. Ford and are interested in participating. And these are local people, and that's what you know, we really like. Some of the people that know the area. Okay, any other public comment? I think it's a great idea. Let's move ahead. That was your comment. All right. Anybody else? No? All right. I would like to make a motion that we uh, give the district manager authorization to move forward with an RFQ specific to fire management planning. Do we, do we need to specify a donor? Amount. Not for going out for Director Falls? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. I'd just like to take a moment to thank Dr. Ford for all his participation. Yes. Point. You very thank you. <laughs> yeah. I don't like being called Dr. Ford, but well, we appreciate it. Thank we you. do appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll keep uh, offering my advice. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. All right. Uh, as we move on here, we have. Um, Let's see, we have the consent agenda. I, I would have to um, pass the Debbie move for the vote out there. Okay, so it's pulled from the consent agenda for regular. Sorry, for the. Uh, for the minutes. For the minutes, okay. Sorry. Okay, it's pulled. Okay. What, you have an issue with the minutes? Well, the issue is uh, I'm not going to. I'm going to be abstaining from voting, on it, so I can't do as it by a consent. Okay. 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 So the rest of us can vote on the minutes. There would be a motion and a second. And yeah. Good. Nine. I move that we approve these minutes. I'll second that. I assume that. Any pub public comment on that? Director Pulse is abstaining. Director Ferris? Aye. President Henry? Yes. Director Swan? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Okay. So, district reports. So 
So the engineer isn't here. Oh, is somebody going to report for I'm him? I'm sure we could all answer questions. I mean, if you have questions, questions, I'd be more than that. If you have the reports in front of you and do the time, and okay. if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, anybody like, have a question? I have a question. question. <clears throat> I have a question for the operations report. Oh, but he's talking about engineering right now. Well, I thought for the reports. Yeah, right itself oh. for the sake of timing. Yeah, and anybody anybody have any questions? we'd like to also give a short update on the PG&E's power safety right. um, outage, too. Okay. So, but go ahead. Yeah, as, um, for the, the operations report, uh, James, I noticed that there were two items uh, on the uh, water quality service order summary report where upon investigation the customer uh, well the customer had reported a groundwater coming out of their faucets and hose bibs and so upon investigation it was found that the um, the fire hydrant nearby looks like looked like it had been um, activated or you know tapped into recently and that might be part of the reason why or do we have a problem with with people accessing fire hydrants and stealing our water? Well, yes, course. we do. And then also that was fire drill night the night before. So that could also be what it was. But it happened um, twice in two different areas. It correct. Like. So well, I'm just wondering. I mean, they're close to the same area. Those oh, two, are they? Those okay. two locations are close to the Pine same Crest area. Pine Drive is next to Ralston Ridge. Oh, Pine Crest. Yes. Well, on Bear Creek Road. They're both off Bear Creek Road. Oh, OK. So I mean, do we have a, the ability to lock those, yeah, those hydrants? Uh, so $2,100 a lock. Oh. Uh, They're so very a lot of hydrants. We right? do put them on. It's the far reaches of the distribution system oh. where we get our issues at the end of the line. So, so there's not much we can do. The big expense with the lock is that it has to be compatible with the fire department because they have to be able to access the lock. And so it's like, it's a big, bulky, expensive lock. So I guess so I get just one more, you know, I am concerned about the cost of losing water that, that we have made. Um, but I guess maybe my bigger concern is people having access to our water system, being able to put something in. Yeah, it's the water quality. The it's, it's the big concern. The, the, majority, the majority of the time, this is fire department costs from running fire hydrants during drill night. But I'm just asking the question: Do we have an access? Is it can anybody you know drive up to a hydrant, open it up, and inject? You know, I don't want to be. We don't have that type of. Wouldn't the water be coming out? Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, your contamination problem is a is an unapproved connection, where someone could be hauling. Okay. Say, we're not we're worried about something. something getting in. Uh, and we have a pressurized system. So as long as we have a maintained pressurized system, we should be okay. A okay, and we don't like it. Mm -hmm. We don't like water theft. We don't like people opening hydrants because it causes issues. Discolored water, water hammer. They blow something. If they're stealing water, they open it very quick. They close it very quick. Blow something out of the ground. Water hammer. Water hammer. Yeah. So it's not a major problem, but we do have it. Is that something we could we should put on our list to address in the future? I mean, I'm just wondering. We've talked about doing public outreach. Yeah. And how how frequently does this happen? Maybe that's the question. Uh, dirty waters? Well, you know, problems like this water where we theft. see evidence water of theft. water tampering it's hard or water, to tell. water theft. It's hard to tell. I've heard it twice in the five years I've been here. Well, I mean, well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, you can't really yeah. consider that this was water theft either. I mean, we're not, well, we don't know that it yeah. was. Whoever investigated suggested it, so that's why I'm yeah. bringing it They up. also didn't realize that it was drill night the night before. Oh. Okay. And outreach might just bring it to people's attention that yeah. oh, well, there's no locks. We people call locks. in when they see it. People yeah. know, okay. and you know we we have a couple of hydrants that do from time to time have an issue. <laughs> All right, thank you. Half of, uh, uh, just, just, a, just, a, just to clarify that, so we do or don't put locks on at this we point? We do, yeah. but we have some but hydrants only at locks. the far end of the system. The nuisance hydrant. Yeah. Okay. And there's not a lot of them. There's only a couple. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Couple of questions, James. Um, am I reading this right? We're still getting the bulk of our water from surface. Is that right? That's my read too. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like, um, well, I guess maybe not bulk. 51, 49, 51 yeah. percent. Yeah. I was gonna say right around 50. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but that's okay. That's yeah, very good. This is incredible actually. for this time. Yeah, this time. Yes. Here. Yeah. Second question was on the uh, Fall Creek 
Um, and am I, it's somewhat hard to read the graph. I'm, I'd like to make it simpler, but are we in compliance still? And have we ever been out of compliance this year? Still no, because we're in October now. And the uh, regulation changes in October. The amount. So, no, in October we've been violating, but in all of September, yes, we were in compliance. And in October we've been violating every day? Well, this could be an issue with how you read the water rights. So, I can't talk about it. We don't want to talk about it here. <laughs> we're looking at We're That's reviewing our water rights. We may have some issues. Off the yeah. So if it's if, if what I'm hearing, then it may be something that we would cover in closed session. Is that correct? I'm going to well, refer to Jim. Well, we, there might be ways to talk about it in closed session, but it wouldn't be something we could just put on the closed session agenda. Mm -hmm. But I have been asked to review it. Just recently. Yeah. There's just it's there's been some discussion on interpretation of our water rights. Okay. And our operations and our reporting. And the way we've reported for a violation right now, as far as I know. That's correct. Okay. Well, I mean, within the context of all the other things that are going on in San Lorenzo River, it um, would be a great time to get everything tight. Well, we're, like I said, Gina has just been given a okay. uh, considerable amount of documentation um, in the last month, and, and we're moving ahead on looking at that. So, in terms of how we're currently doing, have we been in violation every day or only a couple of days? Every day. October. Every day. I don't have that report in front of me, but it has been every day. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. No, we have September. Okay. I'll have September. Steve? <laughs> I have a question. Yes, it does. Yeah, James? So, what's going on at Lover's Lane? Lover's Lane was, um, I'm going to have to report back to you on that one. So it's just I just read that myself, 518,000 gallons. Yeah, 518,000 gallons. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to look into that and get back to you on that. I didn't really catch that when I went to my report. I'm curious to know what it was the month before and why. Okay. Well, I, I, I would like to ask Stephanie a question. Uh, when, when you do the bill pay, when you're paying for a big ticket item, if it is there a way to say if it's coming out of the loan money, or I, I mean I realize all the loan money is our money now, right. uh, but I, you know the the bill pay is over a million dollars, and there's a lot of big ticket items, and I'm wondering if those are projects. That are that we're supposed to be working on um, because of the terms of the loan, or if they're just things we've been working on regularly. Uh, there's the description will usually like if it's for you can usually can tell if it's for like the probation tank or something like that. If it's going to you know the right. contractor there, um, you also on the cash asset reconciliation you'll see. We pay everything out of Wells Fargo checking. That's right. when we do our banking. Mm -hmm. So as we pay the bills, we'll tra you know we'll transfer the money from the Santa Cruz County fund in those respective funds into the Wells Fargo account to be able to pay. Okay, so I can see that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you'll see that gradually going down. Have we expensed any money out of the loan? Out of the fifteen, out of the fourteen nine million dollar loan? Well, and the the main one right now is the probation tank. That's the two. Right, but that's not, uh, that's a separate loan than all we just, Yeah, that's yeah. not. We have a small, we have some small engineering stuff that's getting paid for out of the 14 .5. Yeah. The main money is, I, mean, I think there's a okay. half a million dollar payment to the probation team. But we yeah. thought we were starting to use that money. So yeah, we, yeah. we did start, you know, with the, the In compliance with the resolution. We awarded the pipeline project, so you say expenditures are starting to go out on that. And, yeah. yeah. So you'll start seeing more and more now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's good. I mean, the money's the. I mean, for these projects, I mean, we have the money backing. Yeah. So. Okay. You giggle when you go online and check the balance. <laughs> <laughs> he, every time there's a big bill list, he always oh. <laughs> it's fun when it's like no, we got we got the money. I'm like it's we got. Me a little bit. Yeah. We we have those loans to pay for these projects. So I mean, it is a big 
bill list that we have and yeah. come next spring it'll be even bigger. I'm so. Yes. But come 2021, can we burn the uh, mortgage on the big loan that's going away? So that's my, that'll be my uh, celebration. All right. Okay. That can um, be a prescribed burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the court, I'll ask the director of operations to give you a quick update on the PG&E power outage. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you away from it? Is the real question. Well, I surprised him, but he's, he's on top of it. Uh, PG&E power outage went very well. We were well prepared going into it. We got a warning from PG&E, which benefited the district in being able to get prepared for it. It did wake us up to the fact that if we best prepared and went into it. Uh, Jan Swagger. Yeah, Jan Swagger commended our staff. Uh, Big Basin put out a critical alert that almost ran out of water, Big Basin water. Do we have an air tie with them? To be we do not anymore, but we did offer when we heard, we did, because we were coming back on with power, so we offered to take a generator and an electrician up there that they got their, their power back by within two hours of the critical um, outage alert. Um, so, because we should help them if we oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we had a generator ready right to go as soon as we heard about it. Jumped right yeah. on. And I had a hard time getting in contact to them, but we finally did. <laughs> My um, cell phone wouldn't even work. Yeah. But we came through it really Terrible. good. You know, and it's definitely when you're pre warned, it, things would have been a lot different if it was just been an earthquake and no pre warning. But, and we've um, had a couple of earthquakes this past week. 187 in 24 hours. But 187? Kind of, yeah, but the earthquakes only hit six. Come on. Yeah, well, I, can, I felt um, not yeah. 187. Yeah. You, you should be very proud of your staff. They yeah, performed excellent. excellently and as planned. We and are proud of them. And you two also were important. Were you, even though you weren't here. When you, when you said you weren't here, were you in? Up north somewhere, yeah. so it was kind of like blam. Hello, how's it going? Blam. <laughs> it's going okay. It was kind of a lot like that. It was nerve wracking. Let me tell you. I, I thought it was. I think it was harder not being here than being here. Yeah, but we won't talk about that. Yeah, we won't talk about it. What what happens in the field stays in the field. Right? Yeah, but um, things went really, really well. We were very pleased. Yes, Rick, you said you're looking at a, upsizing some of the portable or some of the jet mercy generators. Is right. that it? Right side. Yeah, just, well, uh, just whatever. It might, might revisiting our purchase list and that, and making sure from what we know now, the, where we want to definitely put our generators this next purchase. Oh, not upsizing the generator itself. I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. I think yeah, just I which facility is going to get it, or maybe, and maybe upsizing one downsizing. It just depends on the facility. Because um, I don't think once you start upsizing, you know, you start adding KBAs, you you. The cost goes up. Well, no, this, no, this is pretty early. Really I, I think our, our so. If you need more money, for no, I'll, I would come back. Okay. I mean, I, I think that the board's committed to this. I think we, we'll be, be on budget. We're going to be on budget. Yeah. Working hard. It's basically. just you know having yeah. all these generators are going to increase cost to the district and maintenance, permitting, fuel, um, fuel. You know, one just, one of the big things that came out of that is when he's talking about the generators and how that. We may not have four mobiles that come out of it. We may end up with more stationaries that yeah. come out of it. Sure. So the big because sense of change. having the more generators, we have four mobiles, you know, and so that's the kind of analysis we're working on now. And then one area that we did have an outage was a generator issue with the generator itself, not because we didn't have a generator. It was an issue with the generator. It was what four or five connections, six connections, five connections, five connections. and we did a boil notice. Um, Follow state protocol and states not even worried about it. Do well, you want to add any stuff? Seems you were top dog at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, like you said, is Nate, the whole team, like the, everyone stayed in very good communication. Um, in the meantime, I mean, there was also a main break that occurred, you know, first thing that Thursday morning. So, I mean, of <laughs> it just goes to show that communication is down. 40 sites to go to every four hours is a lot of, a lot of time. So, District staff has definitely spread thin, but <clears throat> Nate did excellent planning. The fact that we started communications about these back in the summer with the, the flyer that we put out, you know, it's kind of yeah. everyone knew what the messaging was that needed to go out, and everyone executed all their different plans. Hoping we don't have another one of these this year. Yeah, we will have. <laughs> <laughs>
another one that's inevitable. Yeah, that's, uh, Hopefully not this year. So like Stephanie said, we are putting together an accounting of the, the full cost that this incident cost us, and we're putting together a report. So there, that'll filter to you. It's over two different payrolls, so it's going to take a little bit to get that. Is, uh, is there information any, any word about class action lawsuits or anything like that happening? <laughs> Uh, another bankruptcy. Uh, not related to power outages or related to the, fires? The cost related to power. Not that I'm aware of. I don't think you could because it's PUC. Um, Virgil, you? Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, have you verified independently uh, the Comcast explanation for the outage? For, yes. And you verified it? Independent. I know how Comcast works. That's why I don't. Well, have I talked. I did talk to a Comcast employee. <laughs> this is my point. You don't have independent verification. I know how the system works, and I also know that they're remarkably stupid about <laughs> certain things. And um, and I, I would just, I, if you're going to depend on your, your communication environment, you should be a little more diligent. And it, it, when it when it works, it's fine. But there is no backup. <clears throat> and you will never have backup with Comcast. I mean, that's just, it's fundamentally. I find that very untrue because when we have power outages um, in the wintertime and it's raining and they deploy their Comcast generators, Comcast is up and fired up. So I just beg to differ. You might beg to differ, but I was involved in the original design of cable systems. And they distribute, never mind, uh, you're not going to listen, that's okay. Uh, uh, on these leak detects, you give a, a volume. How do you calculate that volume? You don't have a meter showing it, do you? Are you just no, we do, a, we do an estimated gallonage mm -hmm. out in the field and then the time a lot, the time that it's been leaking. And so it's, it, they're estimates. It's all estimates then. Oh, yeah. uh, and you know, all, all of them are main leaks. Okay, so are we getting, a, is it a corp stop separating from the main, or is it, I mean, it, Well, ma it goes under main leak category, which service leaks and main leaks are all in the main okay, leak category. Okay, so it could be a service line. Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, next thing is, the, the, the generators, does every one of those generators get a bill from the air quality board every year for that? Not every one, only the ones over a certain horsepower. And they're expensive too, five thousand dollars on some of those. Right, I and mean, most of them get a, a bill from the county for hazardous material storage. Uh, the field, no, it's very costly to generate, but it's a necessary evil. Um, and um, so, are those costs all shown when you do your calculations for your generators and stuff? I mean, it will be. Yeah, because yeah, some of that's O and M operations and maintenance, and some of it's capital. It'll go into Reynolds leases permits the the permitting and that. And then we have, you know, we, 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 we wash the fuel once a year on the diesel. The propane ones aren't so bad. But, yeah, it, there's a lot of, a lot of expense to the generators. Mark Lee? James, uh, I, I wasn't clear. Are the generators going to be uh, fueled by electricity or propane? Um, or propane and diesel. Okay. So you're, you're completely independent of the electrical network. That's yeah. good. And these are going to be generacs? Um, no saying. No, no saying until we put out a bid for. You know. I was thinking of getting a generac for my house. I have one in my house, and I love it. Are they great? We have a bunch of them in our system, and we love them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, are we finished here? I think you have reports, or you have uh, committee reports. Okay, committee reports. Yes, I did see committee reports there. Is there any reports from any committees? Well, uh, we can go through, um, I think we already went through by now a little bit. Yeah. Um, budget and finance, I'll if Steph wanted to talk about yeah. uh, nine, okay. Senate Bill 998 um, That's going to be, yeah, Senate Bill 998, it's going to be requiring us to write whole new policy about some new ordinances, or we'll change the ordinances um, coming in the new year. Uh, regulations around water turnoffs, all kinds of stuff around that. So that'll be coming 
back a couple more times. Yeah. Yeah. And on admin committee, we, we covered the items. Yeah. Right. And um, I held an environmental committee meeting, and uh, I have a little summary. If, if this okay. is the appropriate time for that. <clears throat> um, so we held the meeting uh, on the 16th at 9.30 a.m. And um, there were a few comments from the audience concerning the environmental planner vacancy, the need for time for public to have input for, on the strategic plan, and concern about the possible presence of the chemical PFOA in the Quail Hollow Field well. Uh, District Mayor uh, Rick Rogers said he would have Nate Gillespie find out information about this. So he took immediate care of the person's concern. Uh, on unfinished business, we talked about the fire management plan. I'll let whatever has been spoken about that uh, <clears throat> be the word on that. Uh, the new business was the integrated pest management plan. The committee and the audience had a discussion about the need for the district to have a pest management plan. Issues of interest were developing partners, protecting endangered species, controlling invasive species, use, the use of pesticides, including citizens, not con uh, <laughs> including <laughs> citizens in this approach, all right? Public outreach and the possible use of owls to manage rodents. Uh, District Manager Rick Rogers will be uh, get input from the staff about their concerns. The committee agreed to continue work on the issue, possibly using the Santa Cruz County's Integrated Pest Management Plan as a model. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. I vote for bringing owls in. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It it is, there's a lot to <laughs> that. <laughs> Our, from, uh, uh, does the owl determine the difference between an endangered rat and a good rat? Stop it. Not so much. I don't Neither think. does a trap. Yes. Or I know. poison. Or the, right. or so the in thunk. Just one little follow-up on that. There was a, um, a display or a... Um, how they, you know, showing how to use possible uh, owls at the uh, SPCA in Santa Cruz today. There were over 30 people that came nice. at 2 o'clock in the afternoon to see how they were dealing with this in the city of Santa Cruz. So uh, it has a lot of interest, including Director Swans. Okay. All right. I have one comment that I think may be of interest from the last Megla meeting that Melissa and I attended. I've had people ask me about the uh, expenditures associated with SMIGWA and, have, and, and people have expressed concern about the money being spent. Um, Lois spoke up on one agenda item, I spoke up on another. Both of them involved expense, and both of them involved uh, excessive expense. Um, I'll let Lois talk about hers if she wants to. Mine was, um, it was there was an agenda item that uh, um, talked about the, the public relations part of SMIGWA. And they're using Miller, is it Miller Maxwell or Maxfield? Maxfield. 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 So mm -hmm. they're using Miller Maxfield. He estimated he was going to spend $38,000 for the entire year. In the first quarter, he, he spent almost the entire budget for the year and came back and asked for more money without any detail as to what he was going to spend that more money with. So and, yes, and I you know, immediately spoke up and said this is not acceptable. But I was surprised to find that the threshold for expenditures for SMIGWA is $50,000 right. for board approval, not $5,000. Yeah. So that just means that we have to do a better job of looking at the expenses from month, month to month because I'm afraid these are not going to be the last two that we find objectionable. Um, my, San Marino. Uh, my problem was a hundred thousand dollar item, but I kind of got beat up over that. So. Hey, you know everybody had to put me in my place. But you know what? I made myself vulnerable. I got beat up. That's the way it goes. But it kind of is like, how dare you ask a question? Well, spending the money was it, was it Chris Perry? No, it's a no, no, no. Chris Perry and I are buddies. Yeah. Well, so here, Chris someone Perry. says that, Lois. That's oh, really? immediately when you ask the question. It, it is. Uh, it yeah. is. It was for Dave Seppos. 
facilitate. The facilitate. The facilitate. The facilitate. The facilitate. Yes. And and. We give you a tip on facilitators. Where did that <laughs> woman go? She's still there. I, I mean, I <laughs> I wanted to know what additional what was he going to do for, the for this money for the ninety five. It's only ninety five thousand. Wow. Over three I, years. I, okay. Yes. Over three years. Pardon me. Uh, ninety five thousand. He is correct. I just like to make it bigger and better. Hey, if I could book 30% of my required income on in one uh, deal that for, for the next three years, that'd be cool. Well, we've been paying him a lot of money, and I just wondered if it was necessary to do more. Yeah. That's all. And I, I asked. And I think, I, I mean, I really like this Perry. <coughs> But I think he should have said, <coughs> say something different, because everybody told me exactly the same thing, and they never ever told me an answer. Hmm. So that's all. And one person there didn't realize. I could have voted no. It would have killed the whole thing. Yeah, the way it's set up. It's yeah, interesting. it would have killed the whole thing. But there's more stuff coming. Because we had a, a meeting today about the agenda for the next oh, Santa Margarita, uh -huh. and it's about what constitutes a quorum. And, and it's all four of you that would. It, it's that. it's just. Kind Are of, they going to change that? There, there's three agencies involved in the Joint Powers Act, yeah. and if any one of those people voting for those three agencies votes no. It's done. It doesn't matter what the, you know, there is no quorum. It's, well, that's a good thing for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing for us. Yeah. But there's going to be some things that the attorney will be addressed. Their attorney, not our attorney. There's, it's maybe our, she have our she attorney is, watching their attorney. It's JPA. It, it, she's our way. attorney, too. Well, okay. I'll I, I the mean, information. it's really strange on what's a quorum in JPA. Yeah, yeah. it was the most bizarre, crazy thing I've ever heard. And Maybe you want to look at it when you have nothing else to do. Our questions <laughs> got your counsel to look deeper into it and came back unique. It's it's just crazy stuff. One other question from Debbie. Has a question. Debbie? Yeah, a comment on Sigma. So, just to be clear, of all this, what, 12 members of this board, the only people that question expenses for are two. So yeah, they're getting right. beat up. But there's a precedent. Before, um, earlier, one of the well owner representatives questioned a $30,000 expense and was thoroughly beat up, and he never questions anything anymore. So. Yeah, it's an attitude there, and it, and it is a $50,000 threshold. So if somebody comes in with a contract for $48,000, it, it, it is automatically approved by staff. It doesn't have to come to the board. Yeah. It can be automatically yeah. approved by staff. It is. Well, Brett signs it. Well, she, okay to do she, it. She, I, she tells us about it, but it's a done deal. Well, the... Well, I don't know if Gina's going to yell at me here, but the... Uh, there was some expenditures that were way below that insisted that they at least go to the board to be to be reviewed with yeah. the intern. They were just going to approve the intern and move on. I said, "Not nah, that's an expenditure unplanned. It needs to go on the agenda, and it did." But there's a real time. But they can just go ahead. And and, and I did it. protest the um, <clears throat> that particular person. Uh, you cut it a, in agenda, and I got it cut. But it never really came out at the board meeting that I got it cut. Well, spelling so, Santa Cruz uh, very well. But it's, areas, so. I, I decided, hey, I would make myself vulnerable by saying what I thought, and I was uh, vulnerable, and I got beat up. Okay. And here I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm still fine. They have a lot of money. Two areas, and we don't. So there you go. We need to keep going until we get those costs down. That's well, Lou and I will. That's our money too. Well, yeah. Lou and I will keep up the good work for me. Yeah, absolutely. If you have to veto something to make a point, 
Do it. You going to adjourn this? Yes. <laughs> Rick, I, I mean, uh, Steve wants me to adjourn this. And I'm adjourning. We are adjourned. <laughs>